Greetings, Viceroys. Welcome to this Against the Storm Buildings tier list, presented by Angry Pigeon. Today, we are rating every building in Against the Storm, with a couple exceptions, into one of the tiers that you see on your screen. S, A, B, C, or D. A couple quick notes, and then we'll get right into it. You'll notice the B tier is the largest tier. I believe this is a good thing. The game balance is in a very nice place right now, with most of the buildings being of average strength, which is kind of what you want in a game like this. I do think it's still important to sort and organize this into tier lists because some buildings are better than others. If you're a new player, I understand that this game can be very daunting. There's a lot of information to know. I want you to watch this video. I think you will learn quite a bit about basic strategy, and the tier list itself will serve as a good reference point for you when deciding which buildings are good and which ones you want to unlock. If you're an advanced player, stick with us too. I want your feedback. If you're an advanced player, I want you to think to yourself, where am I going to put this building in the tier list? Where would you put this building in the tier list? If you disagree with my final placement of a building into its tier list, then leave a comment. I want this guide to serve as a discussion point. Let's advance this together as a community. This is not set in stone. So find me on Twitch, find me on YouTube or Discord and drop me a comment. I want to hear what you have to say if you disagree with my tier list. And one more thing before we get started. This is the spreadsheet. What I've done here is I've calculated how much value every recipe provides when you work on it. Think of it this way. This is the two-star brick recipe. When you make the two-star bricks, you lose two units of clay or stone, valued at 0.42 amber. You gain two bricks, valued at 0.62 amber. So the net gain, the delta gain, if you will, is 0.2 amber when you complete this recipe one time. So to calculate the amber per second you generate, you take 0.2 and divide it by 42 seconds, which is a fairly small decimal. What I've done here is I've inverted that, so we're looking instead at the seconds per amber, which is going to be a whole number, 210 in this case. This isn't discrete, like the when you work on a recipe, it's very discrete, right? This is more of an abstract calculation, but it still does show how valuable each recipe is when you're working on it. I understand that when you work on a recipe like biscuits, you're not going to sell these to Zorg. You're going to eat them. Nonetheless, I believe this calculation will help in a few places to highlight recipes which are very good or very poor. Okay, let's get right into it then. We're going to go alphabetically, starting with the Alchemist's Hut in the in-game encyclopedia. The reason for that is because, well, I don't have any better way that I wish to present these buildings, so we're simply going to go alphabetically. And I will talk about the Advanced Rain Collector, but I'm starting with the Alchemist's Hut because it's a more normal building. Okay, the Alchemist's Hut. The sum of a building's recipes will tell us about its usefulness, right? This offers crystal dew, tea, and wine. Like, that's why we're making the Alchemist's Hut. So how good are these individual recipes? Well, crystallized dew is nice. Crystallized dew can be used in tools, it can be used in barrels, it can be used to make tea, it can be used in fox houses. So this recipe does have some applications. Tea and wine are both luxury goods, and luxury goods are something you want later in the game, if you have a way to consume these at an appropriate service building. They can also be used on some glade events, but typically luxury goods are not what you're looking to draft in the early game and the mid game. They're more of a late game thing. What you really want throughout the game are building materials and food. In my opinion, this is what you should aim for. You want planks, you want fabric, you want bricks, crystallized dew to a certain extent, and you want food. Luxury goods and service buildings are something you want later on, and luxury goods less so because you can actually purchase them from vendors, but they still do have value. There are still occasions where you want to make these, and in fact, the Alchemist's Hut got better with the Fox's update because it used to be the case that only Harpies used tea, formerly cosmetics, and only Beavers used wine. Now, Foxes share these resources. So this building actually does quite a bit for a number of species. Foxes, Harpies, and Beavers like all of this. Humans get a resolve bonus to work here. Crystallized Dew is a decent recipe. So the Alchemist's Hut does offer quite a bit. A quick note on these specialization bonuses. This is the production bonus for harpies. This is the resolve bonus for humans. This is a resolve bonus for foxes. Every species has a corresponding production bonus and resolve bonus. The production bonus means that they have a chance to get extra yields when working on that recipe. When a harpy completes this two-star crystal dew recipe, there's a 10% chance they'll generate four instead of two. And there's other ways to get production bonuses other than this specialization bonus, but you can see it here. 
The resolve bonus increases the resolve of any human inside this building by five, and same with foxes for this one. In general, production bonuses are more useful than resolve bonuses because this game is all about economy. You want to produce as many goods as possible, and when you increase your likelihood to generate more goods, that's a very positive thing. The resolve bonuses are important though. The more I play this game, the more I come to realize that these do matter. But they aren't all created equal. Humans have a natural high resolve, so human resolve bonuses through specialization bonus don't matter so much. Your humans will almost always be happy. Foxes, harpies, and lizards, they matter the most. Beavers matter a little bit. So when you're looking at resolve bonuses, the brewing for humans and the engineering for beavers matter the least, especially humans. The other ones matter more. So how would you rate the alchemist hut? Let's go back to our tier list and put it into its tier. The alchemist hut This is a B tier building. I rate it a little bit low in the B tier because it provides things for a number of species and because it has a very solid crystal dew recipe and it kind of completes its own supply chain by allowing you to use the crystal dew it creates into tea. This is a decent building and it has so many specialization bonuses. Three is actually quite a lot. Some buildings have zero, most buildings have one specialization bonus, so the fact that it has three is actually pretty nice. This building is not something you're looking to draft, but if you have no other better options, the Alchemist set is reasonably solid, so it's going in the B tier. All right, now we're going to talk about the Advanced Rain Collector. As you all know, the Advanced Rain Collector is the advanced version of the Rain Collector. I mean that as a joke, but it's also just true. The Advanced Rain Collector, in many ways, is kind of a double Rain Collector. The Rain Collector has a tank size of 50 for each unit of water. There's Clearance, Drizzle, and Storm. The Advanced Rain Collector has a tank size of 100, and the Advanced Rain Collector generates rainwater at a rate of 4 units per 15 seconds. The regular Rain Collector does 2 units per 15 seconds, so this is twice as good. And if we compare it to Geyser Pumps, Geyser Pumps do two units every 10 seconds. So geyser pumps are better than the rain collector, but worse than the advanced rain collector. Okay, and foxes get a resolve bonus to work here. How do we rate this building? Well, my main issue with this building is that it takes eight pipes on prestige 20 difficulty and five parts. The regular rain collector also takes five parts and geysers take six pipes. The nice thing about geysers is that you start with 14 pipes. So if you find a geyser, you can use six pipes to make the geyser and have eight pipes left over. Eight pipes is exactly enough to equip two buildings with rain engines. So you can have one geyser and two buildings benefiting from it, which is really nice. If you make the advanced rain collector right away, you'll have enough pipes for one building. So I find this cost in pipes to be a little bit too much. The fact that it takes pipes and parts and of course, you can make pipes, you can make it at the crude workstation, but it's going to cost you crystal dew or copper bars, which are a fairly desirable resource. And the advanced rain collector does exactly what the rain collector does, just a little bit better. So because you can already do this, and because I consider rainwater to be somewhat of an optional resource, and because foxes actually find geysers in the wild, which you can use, so you don't really need the advanced rain collector, I understand this is probably going to be a controversial opinion, but the Advanced Rain Collector I have this one in the D plus tier. I think the Advanced Rain Collector needs to do something which it can't already do without it. This building is nice, like I understand the appeal behind it, but my advice is just use your foxes to find a geyser and don't spend all of your copper bars and crystallized dew making pipes just so you can have an advanced rain collector. This building is sometimes draftable despite being in the D tier. Like I understand it is in the D tier and I think you could go the whole game. You could play this game without drafting the advanced rain collector ever and be totally fine for it. It will provide you value in some cases, but I, I just can't see myself drafting the advanced rain collector I did draft it a couple times, and I had a loss on the Cursed Woodlands with it after getting the Advanced Rain Collector in the Greenhouse. That was before the Foxes update. But I don't really like this building, and I think it needs an improvement before it's really ready to be drafted and played with seriously. Okay, 
So that was my controversial opinion. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments now about how the Advanced Rain Collector is actually your favorite building and how I should draft it more often. Fair enough. The Apothecary. I'm glad the Apothecary is up next because this is kind of like the Alchemist Hut in some ways, but I think it's better. So this still offers a Harpy production bonus and a Fox resolve bonus, and it does two star T, much like the Alchemist Hut. It's missing the human resolve bonus, but that's kind of the weakest one anyways. We have two star tea, two star incense, and two star biscuits. What I like about this building is firstly the two star biscuit recipe. Food is important. You can make biscuits at the field kitchen, but the two star biscuit recipe is much better. And this is in fact the best biscuit recipe in the game. There is no three star biscuit recipe and harpies have a chance to double the biscuit yield here. So if you're making biscuits, the apothecary is going to be your best bet. Incense is a luxury good used for humans and lizards. Biscuits are used by humans, beavers, and harpies. Tea is used by harpies and foxes. So you can see this building actually offers something for every single species. These are This is a fairly nice assorted offering. And with flour, if you don't have flour, you can't make the biscuits, but you have other things you could potentially make at the apothecary. I find this recipe collage to be pretty good. Unfortunately, this building only seats two people. That does matter. Three and four seat buildings are better because when you equip pipes to them, that means that you'll have four workers benefiting from four pipes as opposed to, in this case, if you use four pipes, only two workers will benefit from it. Makes sense. So larger buildings, even though they typically cost more in building materials, are better for that reason. The Apothecary is a good building. Let's put it into its tier. The Apothecary is going in the A tier. I think this building absolutely deserves the spot with its ensemble of recipes, the best biscuit recipe in the game, the best incense recipe in the game, and a decent tea recipe, although the Alchemist Hut has the same thing and the tea house actually does produce tea better, but I don't really like those buildings by comparison. The Apothecary offers some very solid recipes. All right, the Artisan. The Artisan is another Harpy building. This is a Harpy Resolve building. All of the Harpy buildings are at the top of the alphabet for some reason. This offers two star coats, two star pigments, and two star barrels. Oh boy. This is going to take a look at the spreadsheet. This is going to require a look at the spreadsheet. I don't like the coats recipe, and we're going to see why when we look at the spreadsheet, but I'm not a big fan of two star coats or three star coats for that matter. Pigment is a bit of a placeholder recipe. The thing with pigment is it's used for scrolls and it's used for packet trade goods, and it can be used for tea now, but tea has four other alternate inputs. Pack of Trade Goods has five other alternate inputs, I believe. And Scrolls, you can use wine instead. I don't really like Pigment. This recipe, it feels like a placeholder recipe. It's not something you're looking to draft most of the time. And Two Star Barrels. The issue with Two Star Barrels is it takes two Copper Bar or Crystal Dew. This is fairly expensive. Copper Bar and Crystal Dew are used for tools. They're used for pipes. They're used for fox houses. So... The barrels recipe is not something I'm looking to make most of the time. If you are on the coral forest, you'll have extra crystal dew, and you can consider making two star barrels. But most of these recipes, they're, they're kind of weak. And let's take a look at the spreadsheet. I think this will maybe clear things up a bit. We're going to look at the spreadsheet, and we're going to look all the way down at coats. If I knew where I put the coats. Coal looks similar to coats, but it's not actually coats. There they are, coats. I've highlighted this recipe in orange because I think it's truly abysmal. 182 SPA on a three star recipe is very weak. The two star coat recipe generates value at a rate of 442 seconds per amber. These recipes just take a long time to complete. It's 168 seconds for the two star coat recipe, 126 seconds for the three star coat recipe. That's a lot of time. So although these do generate value, it's rather slow to work on them. I'm not a fan of the two-star coat recipe and pigment, which is right here. And there is only a two-star pigment recipe, by the way. There's no one-star or three-star. This generates value at a rate of 196 SPA if you use the best input, which is ore. If you use coal, you're going to get 466 SPA. So pigment, it's a fairly underwhelming recipe. It doesn't do anything for you directly. It doesn't provide a whole lot of value when you make it. The only good thing I can say about it is you can put it in, into a pack of trade goods. Overall, I don't really like the 
what the artisan is offering. So the artisan, it's going to go and place a bet here into the C tier. This is a C minus building in my book. If you're playing on the coral forest, the artisan might be able to provide you some value with the barrels. If you're on the coral forest and you have harpies, that's probably the best possible setup for the artisan. There are better coat producing buildings in the game. Typically the clothier and the smithy are, are going to be your best buildings for making coats if you want to make coats. If you want to make pigment, there's also a better building for that. I'm not a big fan of the artisan. You could do without picking this most of the time. Okay. Let's move down to the bakery. I do like the bakery. This is a very quaint building. It's got this warmth special specialization bonus for lizards. And yeah, it's just very thematic, right? The bakery does two star biscuits, two star pie, and two star pottery. I do like all of these recipes. Pottery is one of my favorite container recipes because it takes clay as opposed to crystal dew copper bars for the barrels. And the water skins recipe can be a little difficult to find leather and meat depending on the biome. Clay is actually fairly abundant. You'll find clay just on a lot of the maps by itself. If you're playing on the Scarlet Orchard or the Marsh, you'll find clay whenever you have a copper ore mine active. Clay is a byproduct of harvesting the copper ore. And when you're harvesting reeds as well, clay is a byproduct of the reeds. So there's a lot of ways you can get clay. I do like this pottery recipe. It's fairly solid. The pie and biscuits recipe, also very good. These are both food producing recipes and pie is enjoyed by three species. Those are humans, lizards, and harpies. Biscuits are enjoyed by three species. Those are humans, beavers, and harpies. The main unfortunate thing about the bakery is that both of these recipes require flour. If you are missing flour, there's not a whole lot you can do at the bakery. And if you're missing flour and clay, then the bakery is going to be totally resource locked and not be able to produce anything. Still, these are very solid recipes and you want to have pie. There's only three buildings in the game which produce pie. You need to draft one to make it because you can't make pie at the field kitchen. For that reason, the, pie, uh, the bakery is the second best producing building in the game of pie. And I do value it pretty reasonably high. So the bakery is going into the B tier. A little bit high up, but this is the second be best building in the game to produce pie. The apothecary does better biscuits, unfortunately, than the bakery. But with the pottery recipe to round it out, the bakery does actually provide quite a bit for you, and I don't usually regret drafting it. It does only seat two workers at a time, which is kind of unfortunate, but you can't have everything. The bathhouse. I used to really like the bathhouse. This is another kind of thematic building. It looks real nice. But... The bathhouse has fallen a few tiers. It went from the A tier all the way down to, well, something. The bathhouse converts tea into treatment, which just means your foxes and harpies will use tea to be happy here. And it has two effects. Regular baths, this means that villagers will leave the town 30% slower when they're threatening to leave. That is when their resolve is below zero or, or less. And good health. This means that your production rate is 25% faster globally. I used to value this quite heavily, but I don't really care for this so much. The problem with the global production rate is it doesn't increase your maximum amount of resources. This isn't giving you anything additional. It's not increasing your resolve. It's just making you build things faster, which is nice. But if you run out of recipes you can work on, you may have idle workers. And that happens to me frequently. And this just accelerates that problem. If you're going to have idle workers, like this will just make that problem worse. Regular baths, this is fine below a certain prestige difficulty, but when you're playing on prestige 20, the storm is four minutes long. You really need to stabilize. If the storm is only two minutes long, then you can kind of skate by with the bathhouse and you're very unlikely to lose somebody. But when the storm is four minutes long, you need to stabilize. You're going to lose people. This can act as a safety net if you're really struggling on high prestige difficulty and a lot of species are threatening to leave. Maybe it'll prevent you from losing two, you'll only lose one. But this effect isn't as good as I originally thought it was. So the bathhouse, as far as service buildings go, I'm not terribly impressed by this one. And it did get buffed slightly when foxes came out, because now foxes use this as well, in addition to harpies. But nonetheless, the bathhouse, and I kind of already mentioned where this one may be going. It's going in the C tier. I think this needs some work, it needs to consume another service, or... I think 
it just needs a better ability one which actually provides you with something and it is sad because it has two abilities which kind of look nice on paper but i think each of those uh, each of those abilities individually is just not providing very much so that's the sad state of the bathhouse right now the beanery all right the beanery is a new building which was introduced with foxes Lizards get a resolve bonus here. Foxes get a resolve bonus here, which is very nice. Very nice specialization bonus. This has three-star porridge. This is the best porridge recipe in the game. Two-star pickled goods and one-star crystallized dew. The one-star crystal dew recipe is kind of whatever. Like, you're not going to make this most of the time. You'll frequently find a better way to do it. But if you need crystal dew in a pinch, this will help you out. Two-star pickled goods. I, I value this recipe quite a bit. There's only one other building in the game that does two-star pickled goods, and that's the granary. And the granary is actually better because humans get a production bonus at the granary. But this seats four workers, and you get the resolve bonuses here. So this is a very strong building, a very strong recipe. And porridge, oh, and pickled goods, beavers, foxes, and lizards like pickled goods. So this is one of the food items that three species like out of the five. So this is a very important one. And you can make this at the field kitchen, but the field kitchen is more inefficient. It requires seven of each input. So in this, the two-star recipe allows you to get a discount on water skins. You can see this is a container requiring recipe. It requires pottery barrels or water skins, but it only requires two water skins as opposed to three pottery or three barrels, which means that you want water skins for this recipe if at all possible. And there are cornerstones which will get you water skins. There are, um, I mean, of course, buildings that produce water skins, but if you can get the water skins, it is preferable for this. And I do rate this two-star recipe actually a lot better because it gets the discount on water skins. Porridge, so porridge is a fairly game-breaking um, food item and I have a hard time talking about this without going on a huge rant because the small farm produces grain the herb garden produces herbs these are not edible items by themselves but when you take those items and you combine it with rainwater which you can get from the rain collector or a geyser this becomes porridge which is actually a food that humans and foxes like but anybody will eat it and you can convert four non-edible item into 10 edible item. This recipe is pretty nuts. I, I love it a lot. Um, and, and this building actually offers quite a bit to different species. The only species that it really misses out on is harpies because harpies don't like pickled goods and they don't like porridge, but you're going to have species which like porridge and like pickled goods and get resolve bonuses here most likely. Like the worst possible setup for this might be like beavers, foc or, sorry, beavers, harpies, and uh, humans, but even then, like beavers will eat the pickled goods and humans will eat the porridge and be happy. So this, this building really offers quite a bit. I think even with the worst possible setup for the beanery, it's still going to provide a lot of value for you. And with four workers, like you could equip pipes to this and be producing food like crazy and making your workers very happy as well. So the beanery, da, 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 da. this is our first S tier building coming in on the second to last place on the S tier, but very strong nonetheless. If you have a, a chance to draft the beanery or unlock it, I highly advise you to do so. This thing is an absolute monstrosity. And I do recognize that both of these items, the pickled goods and the porridge, can be made at the field kitchen. But this two-star, three-star recipe are significantly more efficient. I, I really advise picking the beanery. I think you won't regret it at all, regardless of what your current setup is. All right. Next, we are going all the way down to the brewery. This building is less good than the beanery. So the brewery offers three star ale, one star pickled goods, one star pack of crops. And humans get a resolve bonus to work here, which is the weakest bonus to have. The interesting thing about the three star ale recipe is it takes two containers if you use pottery or water skin, but only one if you use barrels. So this gets a very significant discount if you're using barrels to make the ale. That's actually rather significant. And four grain. So four grain plus one barrel equal 10 ale. This is, this is fairly nice. This is going to be the best place to produce ale in the game. This one star pickled goods recipe doesn't impress me at all. And the reason for that is it doesn't get the discount on water skins and it only use, it uses six of each ingredient as opposed to seven at the field kitchen. If you don't have the field kitchen, this building is going to be a little bit more draftable for you if you're an advancing player and you don't have the field kitchen yet. You can, you can pick the brewery in some cases, but the granary does this better, the beanery does this better. The brewery, this one-star pickled goods recipe, it's not quite doing it for me. And one-star pack of crops, this is also a bit underwhelming. The zero-star recipe can be made at the makeshift post, and that only takes six of each input. So this is marginally more efficient than the makeshift post for pack of crops, but not a whole lot. Overall, the brewery just leaves something to be desired, and it takes quite a bit of building material and 
uh, quite a variety of building material and only seats two people. There are a number of perks that work nicely with the brewery. I think it has some kind of unique perks you can get for it uh, from vendors, perhaps. Because I remember I, I picked one up that gives 50% production to the brewery in one Scarlet Orchard game, which was interesting. And I actually did get quite a bit of value out of the brewery in that one game, but that's only one game. I very, very rarely get value out of the brewery. It's going into the C tier. Pretty low. It is better than the Artisan. But this building, it it just doesn't provide enough. Ale, the three-star ale recipe is nice. It is a good way to produce ale. But you'll see there are better buildings or what I consider overall better buildings for producing ale if you really want the ale. The brewery is just not quite doing it. Okay, so the brick oven is up next. The brick oven is another lizard resolve building. It produces three star pie. This is the only three star pie recipe in the game. The other two are the bakery and the furnace that do two star. It is one star coal and one star incense. We are going to look at the spreadsheet for this one before we put it into its tier. Three star pie is a good recipe, of course. This is, this is very nice. You want to have your lizards, humans, and harpies be happy. And incense is for humans and lizards. There's a bit of lizard synergy at this building. So lizards like to work here. Lizards like the pie. Lizards like the incense. And this incense recipe is kind of weak. The smokehouse and the apothecary are going to be better for incense and the pie like i would rather do this at the bakery or the furnace unfortunately because this coal recipe is abysmal we will look at the one star coal recipe on the spreadsheet but the takeaway here is that 15 wood is roughly equivalent in value to three coal there is no real reason to spend 15 wood into three coal it's just so weak i, I really like this recipe may as well not exist it's just that bad and we'll look at the kiln which does quite a bit a better job of producing coal the kiln does it at a two to one ratio instead of a five to one ratio the kiln is if you want to produce coal the kiln is really the only way to go with the brick oven unfortunately this recipe is just just weak incense recipe as well as i said there are better ways to make incense this one is a little weak the good thing about this building is that it has some synergy with lizards so if you have lizards the brick oven may be worthwhile let's take a look at the spreadsheet though so the spreadsheet, let's look at three star, let's look at coal and pie. If I can find them, my scroll wheel is kind of messed up. One star coal does not generate any value at all because the inputs are valued at higher than the outputs. So this recipe, it's essentially, or basically the same on, I think when you get to prestige 20 difficulty and the value gets halved, then yes, this is true. So this really doesn't generate any value. It's such a high number, it, it just doesn't. Now the kiln by comparison generates value at a rate of 88.42 SPA seconds per amber when you're working on its three-star coal recipe. So the kiln does have something to say for its, for its coal recipe. The brick oven re really does not. This is just pathetic. Let's also take a look at the pie recipe since we're here. The three-star pie recipe is worth 128 SPA, which is okay, that's a, not terrible. But the two-star pie recipe is 203 SPA, which is, Pretty comparable. The difference between the two star and three star recipe for pie is not that big. If you have the two star pie recipe at the bakery or the furnace, it's going to do just fine for you. This three star version is, is not good enough to justify being a signature recipe on the brick oven. So the brick oven, place a bet on where you think this one is going. And by that, I mean, think critically about where you believe this one is going. It's going into the C tier above the bathhouse. I think because this one offers pie and there's no way to get pie at the field kitchen, th this does have some value to it. If you need the pie, the brick oven is certainly draftable. If you have lizards, it's draftable. But in general, if you don't have lizards, you may want to give a strong consideration to passing the brick oven up. Okay, the brickyard. The brickyard got buffed slightly when foxes came out because it now has a resolve bonus for foxes. Now this is our first building material producing building. It has two star bricks two-star pottery, and two-star crystallized dew. I like what this brickyard offers. This is fairly steady. Bricks are, of course, an excellent building material, and frequently in the early game, I'm really struggling to get enough bricks to make my blight post, to make my second uh, small hearth, to make warehouses. Like, there's so many things that require bricks and mines. If you want to get even more, like, clay or stone to make bricks, you got to make a mine. Bricks are very important. I really value this two-star recipe. Pottery, as I mentioned at the bakery, this is a very good recipe as well. You're gonna find clay and two-star crystal dew. Again, a very nice recipe. This is used for fox houses. This is used for tools, used for barrels, used for pipes. A lot of applications of crystal dew. 
The main issue with the brickyard is that everything in the brickyard requires stone or clay. If you're missing stone and you're missing clay, the brickyard has absolutely nothing it can do. That is the main crippling weakness of the brickyard. Despite that, it is still a good building because it has three very solid recipes. So, the brickyard. It's going in the A tier, right below the apothecary. Because these recipes are all really solid, it would be higher up if it didn't have such a, a crippling dependency on stone and clay, but you will usually have stone and clay. Having the two-star brick recipe is very important, and having crystal dew and pottery is also a very nice side effect, so I value the brickyard reasonably well. Let's move on to the butcher. The butcher fell a couple spots on the tier list and the reason for that is because skewers and jerky aren't as good as they used to be before the foxes update skewers used to apply to two out of four species jerky used to apply to three out of four species now this is two out of five and two out of five skewers and jerky are only two species each which means they're not as valuable as things like pie and biscuits and pickled goods unfortunately I do like these recipes still. If you want to produce jerky and skewers, I would probably do it at the butcher. I think this is still a solid building because lizards get a production bonus here. And oil is a, de a decent recipe as well. There's only three buildings that produce oil. You have the press, the druid's hut, and the butcher. The press does not get a production bonus like this one does. The three-star recipe for oil is better. It takes only two of these inputs instead of three. But um, this, this will get the job done. And you're not usually producing too much oil. You can use oil for glade event solves and you can use it as a alternate fuel in your hearth. And actually the very last game I played, I did run perilously low on fuel and I had to resort to making a druid's hut to produce oil. So this will help you in certain cases. And I think this, this recipe ensemble is still a very nice one. If you wanna make skewers and jerky, this is significantly better than the field kitchen, which does an eight to 10 ratio. So five to 10 is significantly better for jerky. And for skewers, these inputs are these inputs are okay. The one thing about skewers is you want to be using jerky. This is the most efficient input in terms of the meat that you can put in here. And you can make the jerky right here. That is one of the great things about the butcher. If you make jerky, you can then turn that jerky into skewers, and it's more efficient use of your insects and meat supply in the long run if you do that. For that reason, I think the Butcher is still a good building, although these recipes are significantly less good than they used to be before Foxes. The Butcher is going in the A tier, fairly high up. I think if you, you, you will get value out of this building. The best setup for it is going to be Lizards, Foxes, and Harpies, which I call the Feral Setup, Feral Setup number 10. And yeah, because Foxes like, uh, Foxes and Lizards like the Skewers, Harpies and Lizards like the Jerky, Oil is always a good recipe. So that's your butcher. The carpenter, the carpenter. All right. The carpenter is a very good building. It has a production bonus for beavers. It does two star planks and planks in my mind are probably the most important ingredient in the game because planks are used for so many things. Planks are used for houses, for three different houses. They're used for upgrading mines. They're used for most of the buildings in the game. They're used for producing mines, they're used for uh, small hearth. I think planks, and, and you can use these on glade events too a lot of the time and use them for pack of building materials. Having a solid plank producing building is really, really important. Um, and for that reason, I value the carpenter quite a lot. And tools, formerly simple tools, these are also extremely important. These open up an avenue of play where you can solve glade events with tools to get victory points and amber. And the same thing with caches that you find around the, around the map. If you open them with tools, you will get victory points in Amber. If you don't have tools, you really don't have access to those victory points that are laying around. So this can be a very strong out in a lot of cases. Uh, planks and tools, very good recipes. And pack of luxury goods, we're going to consult the spreadsheet on this one. You may not realize why this is so good, but there's six different inputs for pack of luxury goods, and this is a very high value recipe. The carpenter is the only one with a two star, then there's a one star at the leather worker and press. This is a very high value recipe. We're going to take a look at the spreadsheet. And let's do that right now. Pack of luxury goods is all the way at the bottom here. Pack of luxury goods, two star, generates value at a rate of 56.75 SPA, which is a very good number. This is a very low number, better than it, uh, most everything else you'll find with the exception of pack of trade goods. And you'll see two star pack of trade goods is actually one of the, if not the best value recipes in the game when you use pigment, flour, pottery, water skin. 
uh, for this one, you want to be using wine, cosmetic scroll training gear is the least efficient input into luxury goods, but it's still a fairly good number if you do that. So don't sleep on this pack of luxury goods recipe. This is extremely valuable. It does open up some uh, quests. The queen will sometimes want you to complete orders with luxury goods. And if you have the ability to produce luxury goods, it's going to open up a number of quests, which you otherwise really would have to pass on because you have no good way to complete them. And since only three buildings in the game do pack of luxury goods, I value this, this reasonably highly. If you've been watching my stream, you'll know that the carpenter used to be the top building in the game. <laughs> and I did have one building usurp it because in my opinion, the top building in the game that I have here is very meta defining. The carpenter though, I consider this to be perhaps the second best building in the game because you have three worker slots, two star planks, two star tools, which are very, very good recipes and the pack of luxury goods. It uniquely has the best pack of luxury goods recipe in the game. You really can't go wrong with the carpenter. It's such a strong building. The cellar. Okay, this is building is significantly less good than the Carpenter. Humans get a Resolve bonus at the Cellar, which is the least important bonus. It has two, uh, three star wine, one star pickled goods, and one star jerky. I already mentioned why I don't care for one star pickled goods with the brewery, because this is only marginally better than the Field Kitchen. And same with this, this is a little bit better than the Field Kitchen because it's a 6 to 10 instead of an 8 to 10 for jerky. Nonetheless, if you have the Field Kitchen, you can make these two recipes at approximately the same value. So I don't really care for this building. I, I don't really want to waste a draft on this. The other crippling thing with the cellar is it has two recipes which require containers and you're not always going to have containers. So if you're lacking containers, then the only thing you can do here is one star jerky, which is not especially great. It's kind of okay. And humans don't even like jerky. Humans don't do pickled goods. Humans don't do jerky. Humans don't do wine. So why do humans have a resolve bonus here? There's very little synergy going on at this building and only two workers sit here. The cellar is an extremely weak building. And it's going into the D tier. I really don't like this one. I think you can pass it if you have the ability to unlock it at Citadel upgrades. I, I don't quite know how that work no works nowadays, but give this one a pass for as long as possible. The seller, the three star wine recipe is its most interesting selling point, And there's still better ways to produce wine, I think. It is the only three star wine recipe, but there's other recipes that are just fine. Okay, we're moving on to the clan hall. The clan hall is a kind of unique building because it has this effect on it. And this is a service building. It converts um, swords into brawling and incense into religion. This is very much a lizard building because lizards like both of these things. If you have lizards, foxes, humans, that's the best setup for the clan hall. And this is ancient ways. This doubles the amount of goods you pick up from camps. If you're harvesting from a trapper's camp and you're getting meat, if you would, would get one meat, you now get two. This is very strong. If you have even one camp active, you can kind of justify having three people in here to double the output from that camp. Not only does this double the rate at which you collect food, it doubles the rate at which you can pick it up off the map. If you have 20 meat sitting on one node, you can think of it as actually 40 meat because you're going to pick up 40 meat from that node now. The clan hall is kind of unique in this way. It provides a very, very strong benefit with this ancient ways. The clan hall is going into the A tier. I think this is an A minus building. It is very strong. I do recommend picking it. It is an aggressive service building in some ways because you want to get this down as quickly as possible. It really doesn't matter what year it is. If you're, as long as you have camps active, if you make the clan hall, you're going to get value out of it. I do like this. The main issue I see with it is if you're not currently gathering from camps at all, which could happen, then the clan hall is not going to save you. If you're relying strictly on farming, the clan hall is not going to help you at all. But it is a very good building. The clay pit. The clay pit. So this is an interesting building. What this does is it requires clearance water and it converts that into clay and reeds, which is like, this is kind of the only way to produce clay and reeds from a building. It, it does provide a unique benefit in that way. But I don't like the clay pit, and here's why. It requires fertile soil. There's a number of buildings that require fertile soil, so you need fertile soil. And not only that, but the clay pit competes with those fertile soil buildings for spots on that fertile soil. And there are simply better buildings out there that you want to be placing on fertile soil or around fertile soil. This two-star clay, two-star reed production is just not good. Not good enough. And it requires clearance water as well. 
if you have the regular rain collector, you're not going to get that much clearance water. Like that, that's kind of a kind of a waste. If you have the advanced rain collector, I guess you could maybe get a little bit of clearance water, but it's still going to be kind of a stretch to generate all that water and then spend it into clay and reeds, which are not even really doing anything for you as they are. Like you need something else you can do with the reeds and the clay. This building is very weak. It's going in the D tier. It's going on the very bottom of the tier list, actually. I think the clay pit absolutely needs some improvement. I, I'm simply not impressed at all by this thing. I think it, it needs to provide something which you... It needs to not be so dependent on and clearance water. It needs to not be so dependent on fertile soil and compete with other farming buildings. I don't know what I would do with the clay pit to make it better, but as it is right now, I, I really would never draft it. I think I've drafted it once and I lost that game on the Coral Forest. So I, I really don't advise drafting the clay pit if you can at all avoid it. The Clothier. The Clothier used to be a bad building because coats used to be humans and beavers only and there was this awkward thing where harpies get a resolve bonus here but they don't use coats and this recipe is very slow i already showed on the spreadsheet why this why this is not so good because it takes two minutes and six seconds to complete it's a very slow recipe it generates value very slowly but now that harpies can actually use coats and coats are a three species item humans beavers and harpies like coats there is actually going to be some reason to make the clothier like coats are a bit more important now and this is the best place to make them in terms of this recipe. One star scrolls is okay. There is no two star scroll recipe. You have uh, the scribe for three star scrolls. Otherwise, you, you have to rely on a one star scroll recipe. There are better ways to do this though. There's actually two buildings that have a production bonus for one star scrolls. And the one star water skin recipe, I'll, I'll show water skins when I get to the leather worker, but this recipe is relatively inefficient. I don't really care for it either with uh, five oil or four meat and six leather to make their, your water skins. There's better ways to make water skins. I'm not really a fan of the one star water skin recipe. So the clothier. It's going in the B tier, They're kind of actually very in the middle. If you have harpies, this building will get you some value. It's just not really outstanding. It, it, it is dependent on having harpies, but even if you don't have harpies, you're, you are guaranteed to have one species that uses coats, and the queen does frequently give orders that have to do with coats, so the clothier can help you in that sense. Okay. The cookhouse. This is a building I've been struggling with rating for a little while, and I think I agree with its final position. It does have two food producing recipes. Those are skewers and biscuits. I already mentioned why skewers are less good after the foxes update because um, only two out of five species use skewers now instead of two out of four. Biscuits are three out of five. Biscuits are still rather good. You, you do want to make biscuits. So this is okay. And this is kind of an oddball building because it's offering a meat recipe and a, a baking recipe at the same time. Pigment, I don't like pigment. As we've already discussed, pigment is kind of a placeholder recipe. It's not particularly good. I tend to avoid it whenever possible. These recipes are all right. The one thing I do like about the cookhouse is it seats four people. If you equip pipes in this building, you can make lizards very happy potentially with your pipes and with the resolve bonus here or anyone who's working here. So the fact that this is a four seater building and it does two cooking recipes makes it pretty good. But there are places like the butcher or the grill which do better skewers. And there's places like the apothecary and the bakery, which I would rather have for biscuits. So although the cookhouse does offer good recipes, it's really not the building I'm looking for to have these recipes in it. And the pigment recipe is kind of, kind of worthless. So the cookhouse. This is going in the low B tier, kind of a B minus building. You can draft this. You will get some value out of it because it seats four workers. And if you get a drizzle geyser, you can equip pipes to it. Very strong, very strong. A lot of potential there. But there are better buildings like the apothecary and the bakery that it competes with and the butcher for that matter. So the cookhouse is kind of a last resort. If you're offered like the butcher or the cookhouse, most likely I'm going to take the butcher in that case. All right, the cooperage. The cooperage has two benefits on it. Beavers get a production bonus here. Foxes get a resolve bonus. The cooperage does three star barrels, two star training gear and one star tea. The one unfortunate thing about the cooperage is it kind of requires copper bar or crystal dew in some way in order to make its recipes. Hmm. 
That's interesting. I just noticed that copper bar is on top for the barrels, but for this one, crystal dew is on top. I don't know why they did that. That's kind of strange. The three-star barrel recipe is okay compared to the two-star recipe because this only takes one copper bar or one crystal dew. It still requires two planks. So this is a rather efficient way to make barrels, and you can get a chance to double it. This is this is decent, and it does actually work well with the brewery because the brewery makes good use of barrels. And this is a decent way to produce training gear as well. This tea recipe, I don't really rate it. I think this is kind of a strange thing. If you're going to make tea, you're probably not going to do it at the cooperage. There's plenty of other buildings which do an excellent job of making tea, namely the tea house and the alchemist hut. So because this is a very weak tea recipe, I kind of don't rate it. And this isn't my favorite training gear recipe either. There is a, another building I like, which I think is overall better if you want to do training gear. And barrels, well, this is a good recipe. There are alternatives in pottery and water skins. And there's some buildings with pottery and water skins that I really like. So the cooperage, while this is an okay building, and I think you will get value out of, out of it if you pick it, I did put this building in a kind of a, maybe you won't expect this one, but I, I consider the cooperage to be a C plus building. You will get value out of this in a lot of cases, but it does leave something to be desired. All right, moving down to the distillery. This is a new building introduced with the Fox's patch. This does two star wine, two star porridge, and two star barrels. Humans and foxes get a resolve bonus to work here and it seats two workers. I don't really care for the two star barrels recipe as I've already mentioned because this takes very precious copper bar crystal dew, which you probably want to put on other things. Two star wine, okay. This is, if you want to produce wine, this is an okay way to do it. There are other buildings that produce wine. We, we still need to talk about the tinctury. The Alchemist Hut is probably my favorite building that actually does wine because it offers, I think, a pretty good ensemble of recipes relative to these other buildings. But wine is not a resource you're looking to make usually. I think some of the wine consuming buildings are only okay. And this is a late game item. Barrels, again, not a great recipe. So the most interesting thing on here is the porridge, two star porridge. The Field Kitchen does zero star porridge, which takes eight grain, eight herbs. This requires only five grain, five herbs, and then of course water. I do love porridge. Porridge, because it creates food from items which are non-edible, is really strong. This synergizes with a small farm. This synergizes with the herb garden. I do like porridge, but because it can be done at the field kitchen and there's other better places, we already discussed the beanery, which is the best place to do porridge. For that reason, like the distillery, it's not offering a whole lot. It's going into the C tier, a little bit higher up because it does have a food recipe on it, which is pretty good. You can draft the distillery, and I do draft it on occasion, but in general, you'd rather find the beanery if you want to do porridge, and if you want to do barrels, you probably would rather have the cooperage. If you want to do wine, the alchemist hut is probably your better bet. The distillery is just outclassed by quite a number of things. Okay, the druid's hut. The druid's hut is one of three oil-producing buildings in the game, the others being the butcher, which we talked about, and the other being the press, which we will talk about. Harpies get a production bonus to work here, so this is, strictly speaking, the best oil recipe in the game because it's three stars and harpies get a production bonus. The press does not have a production bonus on it. One star incense and one star coats. I really don't like this one star coat recipe. I've been ranting about coats this entire time. Coats are a very inefficient recipe and especially the one star coat is just not, not generating you any value. If you want coats, stick with the smithy, stick with the clothier, you're going to get more value out of those. One star incense, this is the second best place to produce incense after the apothecary, but harpies don't really use incense, so if you have humans, lizards, and harpies, maybe you're getting the best value out of the druid's hut. Um, oil is a good resource. Oil can be used on glade events. Oil is also uh, a reagent for certain recipes, such as uh, water skins. And I do like this early on. If you're starting the game out, if you see the Druid's Hut early on, you can pick it because oil does show up in Glade events and it can provide a safety net if you encounter a Glade event which you otherwise wouldn't be able to solve. However, I think oil is a little bit less important than it used to be. And I've seen people talking about this on stream, about how before the Glade event update, oil showed up all over the place and they would frequently embark with oil. That seems to be less the case now, but it does still happen. Overall, the Druid's Hut it really is lacking a punch. The one-star coat recipe is not good. The three-star oil recipe is nice, but it's not what I'm looking to draft. And frankly, of the oil-producing buildings, it's the weakest one. Just going on the C tier, right behind the distillery. It can help you out in the early game if you want to get that oil. And 
oil is useful for burning in the hearth as a as a fallback okay explorer's lodge the explorer's lodge is another service building this one does education and brawling which means that foxes and lizards and harpies and beavers will like this the explorer's lodge does nothing for humans the crown chronicles this gives you a plus one to global resolve for every dilapidated building you found in the wild in glades if you find that broken down clothier and you repair it this gets one stack this is fairly potent anything with stacking global resolve is worthy of consideration because when you get to the late game you need a way to generate reputation and if you get it through resolve that's one way to do it these buildings are late game buildings because they accumulate stacks over time so if you're just starting out this is going to have zero stacks on it and this does play well with a certain cornerstone such as ancient pact and mist piercers which show you what's in each glade if you can see what's in each glade it makes a lot of sense to open the ones with three or four buildings in them and you can get a lot of stacks on this and there's also certain modifiers which increase the ch chance of finding broken down buildings and glades so if you're playing on one of those maps this building is going to be fairly valuable overall the explorer's lodge is nice because it provides a stacking global resolve benefit it's certainly going to go into a good tier and by that i mean not a bad tier <laughs> it's going into the b tier this is this is good my main issue with the explorer's lodge is that it it requires luck you can open 10 glades and find zero buildings that give stacks to the explorer's lodge i've had games where i picked the explorer's lodge and just got starved and had no stacks on this thing so this is a nice building it does have a lot of potential but you need to be careful with drafting it in the early game because it may be dead weight you may not really get any stacks out of it as the game goes on but it does synergize well with those cornerstones as i mentioned so it does have quite a few possibilities next up we are going to take a brief look at the fabled field kitchen i talk about this one on stream all the time and i think people who are progressing through the citadel as newer players they maybe their eyes gloss over a little bit but this is the field kitchen and as you can see it offers four zero star recipes for jerky porridge biscuits and pickled goods this is very strong um there's six food recipes in the game the only two not represented here are skewers and pie so skewers and pie are very nice to have pie especially because pie actually satisfies three different species skewers is only two so for that reason skewers is less valuable this building really colors my perception of the whole game because when i'm looking at food recipes i'm asking myself like is it better than the field kitchen because i can make a field kitchen it's relatively cheap to make only three planks three fabric at higher difficulties and the field kitchen does all these recipes if you are working on citadel progress i, I don't know what the prerequisites are for unlocking the field kitchen exactly but i if you do have the option to unlock the field kitchen I, this is a very strong building this is a very strong building you always have it available you don't need to draft it it's just here and it solves all of these food needs for you all right enough of that we're going down to there's a lot of skips here i am skipping the foragers camp by the way i know that this is a draftable building but i think it depends too much on your current biome the foragers camp is probably one of the weaker camps compared to the trappers camp and the herbalist camp i believe but I'm not going to rate the camps. I think they, they are situationally pickable depending on the current map. Forester's Hut. This is our first real, well, this is our first farming building because it uses fertile soil. Um, the clay pit actually plants itself on top of fertile soil. The Forester's Hut goes next to fertile soil and then uses it. Beavers get a production bonus here. This is for resin and crystallized dew. This is an interesting, interesting building. It doesn't produce any food, uh, unlike the small farm, herb garden, and plantation. Resin is nice because resin is difficult to come by, actually. If you're on the Royal Forest, there will be a ton of resin and trees. If you're on any other map, like, resin is actually fairly uncommon. So the ability to produce resin can be quite useful. Resin does masquerade as a luxury good as far as glade events are concerned some of the time. You will open a glade and see that it accepts 30 or some odd resin as one of its outs, and frequently for, a good, for the good resolution, like the one you want. Resin can be nice for that reason. Crystal Dew is, of course, very valuable. There's other ways to do Crystal Dew. We've already talked about the Alchemist Hut. And Copper Bars are usually a strict alternative to Crystal Dew. The only exception I can think of is Fox Houses. Crystal Dew is very nice to have, though. Resin, if you're using resin, I believe resin can be turned into tea, Crystal Dew, and incense off the top of my head. 
which is which is okay but obviously you're not going to turn it into crystal dew if you if your end goal is crystal dew you're just going to make it here rather than making the resin this is a good building it, it offers some things which are otherwise kind of difficult to come by but aren't strictly necessary and beavers get the production bonus here and one trick about farming buildings that some people know and talk about is if you have beavers but no other species you can drop like the herb garden down next to fertile soil and plant on it and then you can have all of your beavers harvest what the herb garden planted and your beavers will get the production bonus on the buildings planted by the herb garden for instance or any other or the plantation or the small farm so if you don't have humans but you do have beavers like there's an extra application of this building which is a little bit marginal but can be quite helpful the forester's hut this is going to the b tier a little bit high up i do like the forester's hut because it doesn't offer food exactly it's not what i'm looking for but it is very nice and it is one of the better ways to come up with crystal dew if you're on the coral forest this is probably something you can avoid if you're on the scarlet orchard you're probably more looking for copper bars rather than crystal dew if you're on the royal forest this is a little bit less good as well because you will have a huge supply of resin so pick it with caution, but this is a very nice building and it does provide some kind of unique benefits, which is hard to get otherwise. Moving on to the Forum. I really like the Forum. This is another service building. This is a beaver building. Beavers like leisure, beavers like education. If you have beavers, harpies, humans, this is going to be the best setup for the Forum. The special effect on the Forum is 15% global chance to double your yield. I've been talking about why the 10% chance you get from specialization bonuses is so important. This is a global 15%. This is a very aggressive building, a very aggressive service building. You want to put this down as early as possible to be getting the 15% production doubling chance. I, I, I could talk quite a while about why this is very important, but anything that gives you a, a chance to double your production. And keep in mind, when you upgrade your hearth to level 3, that's a 10% bonus to your global production doubling. This is 15%. And if you're going down the um, Citadel upgrades, anything that gives you a global production chance, you want that. I'm not sure if there are any, but keep that in mind. The Forum is a really excellent building. It's going in the A tier. Perhaps surprisingly, this is not the highest rated service building. I do have one more that is rated higher and will be in the S tier. And that is a rather different building. We'll get to it. The Forum, very strong building though. Hard to go wrong. If I see this as my first draft of the game, I'm not too shy about picking it, even though it's a service building and you don't want service buildings so early on. Because the Forum doesn't require stacks, because it provides you just great value by having it and having three workers in it, you will get value of it out of it pretty quickly. If you can get it by year three, four, have it planted down, that is a bit early, but totally worth it. You will get value out of this building. Okay, next on our list is the Furnace. I like this building quite a bit. Lizards get a resolve bonus to work here. This does two star copper bar, two star bricks, and two star pie. The thing about the Furnace is each of these recipes by itself is a little bit weak and a little bit dependent on certain inputs. Copper bar is dependent on copper ores. Brick, bricks are dependent on clay and stone. And pie is dependent on flour, of course. But when you combine these three recipes into one building, there's actually quite a few things the furnace can do for you. If you're lacking copper ore, well, you can use this as a brick machine. You can use it for pie. If you're missing flour, you still have things you can be doing with the furnace. And this seats three workers. You can equip stormwater to this thing and make your, worker, make your workers, make your lizards very happy, produce extra pie. I, I do very much value the furnace. I think this is one of the better buildings in the game because it has building materials, it has food, and it has one of the better ways to make copper bars. And there's not too many great ways to make copper bars. We will talk about, like, the grill is a fairly weak building with only one star recipe. Stamping mill also. Stamping mill's okay with its one star recipe. The smelter, all of the smelter really does is make copper bars. This is like bricks and pie as well. So I would much rather have the furnace than the smelter easy, even though the smelter has the better copper bar recipe. So the furnace... This is the third best building in the game in my book, and it's been up there for a while. You'll see the carpenter does planks, the furnace does bricks, and there will be a, some fabric producing buildings up here, as you may have guessed. The furnace, very solid building. I, I draft it often. I did advise somebody who was watching on stream not to draft the furnace on the coral forest recently, but on the coral forest, you will have crystal dew, so the furnace is a little bit less necessary. Still, the two star bricks and the two star pie recipe are completely worth it. 
The, not the garden, that's a nothing building. The granary, all right. This is a long favorite of mine. I think it is a little bit less good since the Fox's update because this two-star pickled goods recipe, we now have the beanery. And I already mentioned that beanery is a very, very good building. I have it in the S tier. This two-star pickled goods recipe is technically the best in the game because humans get a production bonus here, so you have the chance to double your pickled goods. And you have a two-star fabric recipe with the chance to double your fabric. This is this is really, really solid. I love these this combination of recipes. It's offering quite a bit. And the two-star pack of crops is okay. There's only one other building in the game, the brewery, which does an improved pack of crops. Of course, you can make this at the makeshift post. I do think this is significantly better than the makeshift post because this only requires four as, instead of six. So you will get 50% more pack of crops for your same inputs. And humans have a chance to produce double. So this pack of crops recipe is rather nice. Overall, and the granary seats three people. Overall, this is a very, very nice building. I think it's hard to go wrong with the granary. Place your bets on where you think this one belongs. In my mind, this belongs near the top of the A tier. The granary, because it offers a two-star fabric recipe and, a second, and the best pickled goods recipe in the game, although the beanery is what I would rather have for pickled goods if I had the choice. And there are better fabric producing buildings, or at least one better fabric producing building, if you can believe it. You probably can believe it. The granary, still rock solid. This is frequently pickable, and I, I've always gotten a lot of value out of the granary. Greenhouse. So the greenhouse, this is kind of like the clay pit in, in some ways. You plant it on top of fertile soil and foxes get a resolve bonus here. Humans get a production bonus here. This does herbs and mushrooms. This is better than the clay pit because herbs and mushrooms are actually a fairly nice combination and they are food. So you can eat the mushrooms if you need to. And you can make, you can make biscuits and pie from this. Mushrooms convert into flour. You can use herbs for biscuits and pie. So th this is enough to get you two very important food items by themselves. My main gripe with the greenhouse, of course, is number one, you have to have fertile soil. Number two, it competes with other buildings that do similar things. For instance, the herb garden has herbs and typically I'm embarking with something like the small farm or the herb garden. This can supplement, this can supplement if you have one of the small farm or the herb garden, this can give you some extra, extra resources that you didn't have access to otherwise. And this requires drizzle water. The Clay pit requires clearance water. The problem with that is if you have just a regular rain collector, you're probably not getting too much drizzle water, like enough to make use of this. If you have an advanced rain collector, yeah, you might be getting enough drizzle water to make use of the greenhouse. But I would hesitate to draft two buildings just for the sake of generating basic resources. If you're drafting the advanced rain collector just to enable the greenhouse, and I understand the advanced rain collector can do more than just enable the greenhouse, but it's kind of a dependency that the greenhouse suffers from. You really need a drizzle geyser. I did upgrade the greenhouse to a higher tier because with foxes foxes get the resolve bonus to work here and foxes can help you find the drizzle geyser when foxes reveal the geyser on the map because of their special ability it will indicate which color it is you just have to look a little closely but it will indicate if it's a drizzle geyser or not and if you know you have access to a drizzle geyser like this actually kind of enables the greenhouse and this will be a very good building it is unfortunately a bit setup dependent while some people swear by the greenhouse and I can see why this is strong in the right circumstances. Unfortunately, those circumstances can be a bit limiting on when the greenhouse provides you its value. Greenhouse is going in the C tier right above the brick oven, a little bit higher up. I used to have this building in the D tier and with the release of foxes and having had some good greenhouse games recently myself, I'm forced to admit that this is not a D tier building. This is a building which does provide value in the right circumstances. And those circumstances for me are you have to have a drizzle water geyser active and perhaps not have any other, well, have maybe one other farming building, like the small farm or the herb garden or the plantation, but not probably not two. If you already have like two farming buildings, there's no way you would take the greenhouse. I find myself maybe purchasing this from Zorg more than anything. Zorg offers, I think, a pretty decent price on the greenhouse compared to other blueprints. I don't know how merchants determine that, like how much they're selling you blueprints for. The ranch tends to cost a lot of money, like over 40 amber, and the advanced rain collector too, for that matter. The greenhouse, I think, is relatively cheap compared to other things that Zorg is willing to sell you. So if you see Zorg with the greenhouse, you can pay him for it. You might get value out of this, especially if you have a green water geyser. Absolutely, go for it. But the greenhouse, I have it in the C tier because it is, unfortunately, a little bit too dependent on your current setup. The guild house. The guild house is a building I struggled with, struggled with rating for quite a while. And I think I have it in the correct tier now. 
The Guildhouse only does luxury, so it converts wine into luxury. Your beavers and foxes will like it. It has two effects. The first one is traders arrive 50% faster, which is okay. This is all right. And this effect is for every 60 amber you sell on trade routes or to merchants directly. And that, it, so with, when you sell goods to merchants, it's like the value of the good. If you're selling pack of luxury goods to merchants, like whatever the value of the good is, that's what counts. Like you don't have to give them amber necessarily. And in fact, a point of note, if you buy perks, if you, if you purchase perks from vendors, that doesn't count towards the guildhouse stacks. What does count is selling them goods and putting goods out on trade routes. This accumulates one stack of global resolve every 60 amber you do that with. This is fairly powerful. If you use trade routes, you can put a lot of goods out on trade routes and accumulate amber and you accumulate stacks. And then you can take that amber and give it to vendors and purchase things from them. And that'll give you even more stacks on the guild house. And that's something you kind of want to do anyways. Like it's just a very good strategy to have. Trade routes are very beneficial. There's a lot of cornerstones, a lot of quests that synergize with trade routes. So doing trading is a very good thing. If you're a beginning player and you're going down the Citadel list, this may not be quite as good of a building for you, but you still will be able to sell goods to vendors and get stacks. Just be careful though. I think this is a little bit more of a end game building. This is something you want to place down later on in your game and maybe also once you're a better player. If you're a new player, just be a little cautious with the Guildhouse. You may be disappointed by this, but I think the Guildhouse does provide quite a bit of value. It can provide an out to the game. Guildhouse is going in the B tier, kind of in the middle, right above the Clothier. I do like this building, but it is a late game building. It is dependent on having stacks before it can really come alive for you. I used to consider the Guildhouse to be a, a win more building if you played Hearthstone or Magic. Like a win more card is something that gives you, like in Hearthstone terms, like if you have a card which gives you a lot of benefit for having a lot of minions on the board, it provides you even more value in that case. I, I used to think of the Guildhouse that way. Like it's something that if you're already winning because you're completing a lot of trade routes and you're you have a strong economy, then the Guildhouse is like helping you win more. But after playing a couple games and a couple really hard games with no orders, I think the Guildhouse does provide a, a strong out. You can get a really massive amount of stacks on this thing, and it does somewhat reward you for doing something you want to do anyways, which is trade routes. I do like the Guildhouse. Just be cautious with it. it it's not going to provide you too much value in the early game. We're going to skip a few buildings here and go to the Herb Garden. The Herb Garden is our next farming building, and this is like actually a proper farming building, kind of like the small farm and the plantation. And I talk about the Herb Garden, small farm, plantation as a trio. They are, they all kind of do similar things. And you can embark with those three buildings as a choice when you go to a map. I have some newer players ask me about these three buildings as well, like which one is best, which one should they focus on. I do like the Herb Garden. This is this does two star herbs, one star roots, which means you'll get six herbs and one roots out of this. I used to rate the Herb Garden in the C tier, but the Fox's update made this a bit better. The Fox's update made it better because there is now a porridge recipe and you can convert porridge or you can convert herbs into porridge at an eight to 10 ratio at the field kitchen. The, the problem with herbs is that you can't eat them raw. They're not edible. But when you convert them into porridge, porridge is edible. If you have the ability to produce porridge, these herbs become very valuable. And herbs do like a number of variety things for you, such as turning them into a pack of provisions, they can be used in pie and biscuits. Herbs can be used in incense. I believe they can be used in crystal dew and maybe tea. Herbs have a fair number of applications of kind of random things. I do like this and roots can be turned into flour if you really need to and you can eat roots if you really need to. That is always an option. The herb garden, the main unfortunate thing with the herb garden is that it competes with the small farm and the plantation and also things like the greenhouse for, for space. And one of the points against the greenhouse that I didn't mention is it, it does herbs. The herb garden also does herbs. So if you have the herb garden, like the greenhouse is a little bit questionable uh, to go with the herb garden. So how do you rate the herb garden? If you were choosing between the herb garden, the small farm and the plantation, which one would you embark with? I put the herb garden at the top of the A tier. This is very strong. And I think farming buildings are kind of meta defining, especially now that humans suss out fertile soil right at the beginning of the game or right when you get humans. It, embarking with a small farm, herb garden, or plantation was always a good idea. Now that you have a, a near guarantee, if you have humans that you'll find fertile soil, this is even better. And I think the farming meta is, is real. It's a big thing. People like to find fertile soil and settle down. And I think that is overall usually a very nice strategy. Uh, there's some maps like the marsh which really discourage that. If I'm going to the marsh and I don't have humans, then I may not actually take a herb garden or a small farm or plantation with me. 
But in general, I am taking one of those buildings when I embark. And Herb Garden, because herbs have quite a few number of uses, and Herb Garden by itself, compared to small farm and plantation, actually can use roots to make flour and then use herbs to make biscuits and pie by itself. This is a very nice building, and I rate it in the high A tier. If you're embarking with your herb garden, you probably won't regret it. The only thing I can say is if you don't yet have the field kitchen, if you haven't unlocked that in the Citadel, maybe consider taking a different building than the herb garden. I think what really accelerated the herb garden from the C tier to the A tier for me is the fact that you can use herbs and porridge. If you don't have the ability to make porridge, the herb garden is a little bit more suspicious, and the plantation and small farm are likely going to be better. So that's just about enough on the herb garden. We're going to skip herbalist camp, but I, I do like this. I guess if I had to rate the camps, I would probably say trapper's camp and herbalist camp are the best and the forager's camp is not quite as good. The next building we have is the kiln. When I was doing research for this uh, uh, way long ago, <laughs> I, I found some Reddit thread where people were asking, what is the one building you always draft? And the kiln got mentioned a couple times in that Reddit thread. So, how good is the kiln? Well, we already looked at the spreadsheet and we saw this, this coal recipe is actually quite good. It generates value at a rate of approximately 87 or so seconds per amber. This is the only really good way to generate coal. If you're playing on the marsh or the coral forest, there will be coal deposits on the map that you can just pick up. If you're playing on those two maps, I don't like the kiln quite as much because you will or you should have access to coal. If you're playing on the Cursed Woodlands, the Royal Woodlands, or the Scarlet Orchard, coal production is a bit more meaningful, and in fact, on something like the Royal Woodlands, where you have just wood for days, this can be very strong. The one-star brick recipe, obviously this is not as good as the two-star brick recipe. I'd rather be producing this at the Brickyard or the Furnace, which I really like. But this, this one-star brick recipe is fine. It'll increase the amount of bricks you get by 50% relative to the crude workstation for the same amount of inputs. So this is fine in a pinch. And by the way, lizards like to work here, seats three workers. This is this is quite nice. This is very good. A one star jerky recipe. When I talked about the cellar and I don't like the cellar, this is still better than the field kitchen because it uh, it's only six instead of eight inputs for the same thing, which is which is okay. And there is lizard synergy here. Lizards like jerky, lizards like to work here. I do value this, like the cellar has the human resolve bonus. This has a lizard, lizard resolve bonus, which is much better. And uh, having a building material recipe, even if it is only one star bricks, is very nice. And this recipe is fairly unique in what it provides. Again, on the marsh and the coral forest, I may not pick the kiln. Otherwise, this is a very solid building. So the kiln, and I may actually promote this one slightly. I, I know I kind of made a cutoff point here. I'm thinking of maybe boosting some things, like keeping the same order of this tier list, but boosting things up a little bit. Uh, I think the, but I, I do have the kiln at the top of the B tier right now. And the reason for that is it is biome dependent. As I said, I'm probably not drafting this on certain biomes. There are better brick recipes out there. There's better jerky recipes out there. And sometimes you're going to have coal already. Like if you get that cornerstone burnt to a crisp that gives you coal for destroying blight rot, you probably don't need the kiln. The kiln is good though. It does provide that fairly unique ability to turn wood into coal. And it's very strong. I think it is a little bit hard to go wrong with the kiln, but there are going to be better drafts out there as well, potentially. For that reason, I have it at the top of the B tier. The kiln is a strong building. Don't don't have any doubts about that. Moving up to the leather worker, and we will look at the spreadsheet for three star water skins because three star water skins is the signature recipe of the leather worker, and we also have two star fabric and one star pack of luxury goods. We already looked at one uh, two star luxury goods at the carpenter. This is marginally worse. It takes five goods instead of four, so the carpenter does a better job. This still provides a decent amount of value for you though. And one other thing I like about having pack of luxury goods available is if you have the ability to produce any of these luxuries, all of a sudden that becomes much better. So if you draft this as your first draft of the game, for instance, and then your next draft, you see something like the scribe. Well, normally I'm a little suspicious of the scribe, but because you can turn your scrolls into luxury goods, all of a sudden, like that luxury producing building, it may be more acceptable to draft it. So this does enable other buildings in a way. And that's partly why I rate the carpenter so highly. Two star fabric, again, fabric building material recipe whenever you see building material recipe that you don't already have it, it's going to be really nice you want this and there are quite a few options for doing two-star fabric like we already talked about the granary which is very good we will talk about the weaver which is good the leather worker this is also a very good building like all four of these fabric producing buildings are quite good actually and three-star water skins 
This is one of my favorites. I think on the marsh in the coral forest, you're going to get the most value out of this because you will find meat and leather sitting around. The royal forest too, to a certain degree, has those uh, snails <laughs> crawling around. And from those, you should get leather and you should get meat. So there's quite a few maps where you actually can make water skins. And if you have the ranch, you're going to get these materials as well. So this does have some synergy with the ranch. Harpies like to work here. Lizards get a production bonus here. This is rock solid. What I love about the leather worker is it's got this double specialization bonus, and these are very, very good specialization bonuses to have. It only seats two workers, which is a bit unfortunate, but because it does two-star fabric, and it's got this convenient pack of luxury goods recipe and kind of this unique water skins recipe, this is actually a, a very nice building. So let's take a look at the spreadsheet. We're going to look at water skins. If I knew where that was on the spreadsheet, water skins, three star water skins. And I have this highlighted in green because it is quite good. You can see if you're using meat, which is slightly more efficient than oil, you're getting SPA of 75. This is a very low number. This is this is very nice. There's very few recipes in the game that are reaching this, this amount of value. And you can turn around and put these into pack trade goods, like obviously use them for pickled goods, which is, I think pickled goods are very crucial. You wanna be producing pickled goods a lot of the time and water skins are the best thing for pickled goods. I really value this recipe. You can see the one star recipe that the clothier offers and a couple other buildings offer. This is fairly low value. You're not getting very much out of working on the one star recipe. The two star recipe for water skins is okay. The three star recipe really does shine and especially because lizards get a production bonus with the leather worker. This is very, very strong. The two star recipe that you find on the supplier is, is noteworthy though. And I, I, when we talk about the supplier, we'll get to that. But for now, the leather worker And again, please be thinking about where you would rate this building before I reveal them. This is going in the A tier, below the butcher, above the forum. There is a lot of competition for fabric producing buildings. There's a lot of good fabric producing buildings in the game. Uh, if there weren't, the leather worker might be even higher, but I, I do very much value this building. And I, I think it should be drafted a lot. It is much better on the marsh and the coral forest and um, probably also the uh, royal woodlands to an extent. If you're playing on the Scarlet Orchard or the Cursed Woodlands, I might consider lowering this one down, but in general, with two solid specialization bonuses, the leather worker is very rarely going to disappoint you. Lumber mill. All right, the lumber mill. This is the flagship three-star planks recipe, and not to mention beavers get a production bonus here. This is plank central. Planks, as I've been saying, planks are critical because they provide houses for three different species. They're used for small hearth, they're used for most of the buildings in the game, planks are, are very nice. One of the things I like about the lumber mill, and I talk about this a little bit, is this costs three bricks, three fabric on Prestige 20 difficulty. You can actually, with your starting resources, plop the lumber mill down right away. You don't have to make the crude workstation. For the carpenter, for instance, you have to make the crude workstation first and make a plank so that you have enough planks to make the, uh, make the carpenter. Unless, of course, you embarked with planks, which is something you can do or you happen to have them in your caravan. But the fact the lumber mill, like you can just put these down right away, it is good. I guess it's it's a slight problem because this does take fabric and bricks and then the lumber mill does not get you those back. Nonetheless, this is so solid to be producing three star planks right at the beginning of the game. One star pack of trade goods, we've already seen this on the spreadsheet. This is a very high value recipe and it unlocks certain quests that are now easy to complete because you have the, tra the trade goods. There's cornerstones that synergize with this, give you two amber for every six trade goods, value added tax. This is, this is good. You want to be using, uh, I think, pigment, but most of these are acceptable. I think oil and barrels are the least efficient resources, but if you're using one of these other four, like it's generally, it, and it's fine either way. It's, it's really fine. The one-star scroll recipe, this is, this is okay. The scribe is the only thing that does better than a one-star scroll recipe. Otherwise, you, you have to use the lumber mill, clothier, or rain mill. The rain mill and the lumber mill have a production bonus on them. So they're both acceptable ways to produce scrolls and beavers like scrolls. This is a, a beaver synergy building. And the three-star planks, I, I just can't say enough good things about this. Like frequently you're starved on wood, you need this for houses. The lumber mill is just doing quite a lot. And the lumber mill. This is an S-tier building, position number four. I do have it after the carpenter. If I have the carpenter, I would consider not drafting the lumber mill. But in some cases, I would draft the lumber mill anyways, because the three-star plank recipe is so much more efficient than the two-star plank recipe. And because it does pack of trade goods and, and potentially scrolls, Lumber Mill is a really solid building. I love to see it. If you get it as your first draft of the game, it's rarely a bad idea to pick it. And houses require wood more than anything else. You want to get the Lumber Mill. 
Okay. Next up, we have the makeshift post. No, just kidding. The makeshift post, of course, is a very good building, but you don't draft it. The Manufactory. The Manufactory, I used to rate this as an A-tier building. It's fallen because I think it did get a little bit weaker after the Fox's release. This used to be a Harpy building. So it used to be the case that Harpies like to work here. Harpies use training gear and pigment is used for scrolls, which Harpies like. So this was all kind of like a bit of a Harpy synergy and I liked it for that reason. Now Harpies don't use training gear. So if you have Harpies, Foxes and Lizards, you're going to get the most value out of this building because Lizards and Foxes like the training gear. This does seat three people, which is okay. Like the fact that it, it can seat three Harpies and make them happy is nice. Pack of provisions, this is Aside from the Provisioner, the only other provision recipe in the game, aside from the makeshift post, this isn't terribly necessary. If you have a bunch of herbs, like if you're getting using the herb garden or the plantation to make herbs and berries, like typically you'll have some you can throw into pack of provisions. Provisions are nice. You do need these for trade routes. If you're a new player and you haven't unlocked trade routes yet, then provisions are even less useful. But if you have, if you have unlocked trade routes, yes, provisions are very nice. The thing is, there's a couple good cornerstones in the game, which generate provisions for you for free. My favorite one is the one that gives you, I think it's called peasant supplies or something. It gives you free pack of provisions for every new villager you accept, which is actually really strong. That cornerstone kind of solves your provision problem. It just provides a lot of value. So between cornerstones, which provide provisions and the makeshift post, I don't find this terribly necessary. It is nice to have, this is 50% more efficient than the makeshift post, but I'm not about it. I think there's other recipes you really want to be drafting for other than pack of provisions. I've already ta already talked about why I think pigment is a less than good recipe. Training gear, also okay, but it's kind of lacking the harpy synergy that it used to have. There's better ways to produce training gear like the cooperage or the tinkerer. Manufactory is overall a fairly underwhelming building, and it shocks me that I used to have this rated in the A tier. Manufactory is going to the C tier, kind of near the bottom actually, just above the artisan. The really the only good thing I can say about this is that it gets the Harpy Resolve bonus. Otherwise, it, it's just kind of, you're very likely to have better buildings than the Manufactory. And when I talk about things like this, if you find the, a dilapidated Manufactory in a Glade, feel free to take it. Like, that, that's kind of a freebie, in my opinion. Like, when I, when I say the Manufactory isn't good, it's because I'm not going to spend a draft on it. But if I find a building in the wild that I can just repair for free, yeah, like, do it. Like, that's a free building. Unless you, like, you really don't need it because it you already have that stuff covered the market the market's up next the market does luxury and it does treatment so this is kind of a fox building if you have foxes beavers and harpies this is going to be the most value you can get out of the market the ability it provides is plus 10 to carrying capacity which is kind of interesting i, I don't i don't dislike this this is this is interesting but it's not really necessary. If you have Harpies in the Ancient Hearth, you get a plus five. And you do, of course, get diminishing returns with every point of additional carrying capacity you get. I think you have five to start with, and then it upgrades to six at the Citadel. And then this would get you to 16. If you have Harpies in the Hearth, this would be 21. But very rarely are you carrying a stack of 21 goods at a time. The main reason you might want this is for Glade events. Sometimes for Glade events, you're delivering like stack of 30 or something at a time. But you will have multiple workers on that. And what I suggest you do for Glade events is really prioritize putting a warehouse down close to the Glade event so that your workers don't have to travel so far. And with warehouses, you can delete them and remake them. Warehouses do cost parts. I think people are a little bit too conservative when it comes to placing down warehouses. I usually open the game by placing a warehouse down opposite my main warehouse, with the idea being I can delete it later if I need the parts back, which frequently I do. But I can have one woodcutter camp next to my main warehouse and one woodcutter camp next to that other warehouse. The point is, if you if you have a Glade event, put a warehouse down next to it like yes this is a nice ability but you don't need it uh, I, if i'm looking to draft a service building i'm going to draft global resolve stacks more than i'm drafting this this is a little bit lackluster so the market and give this one a good think this is going in the c minus tier very close to c tier borderline d tier i, I really don't care for this there is one service building and uh, we'll get to that one which i rate less than the market and that one is in the d tier coincidentally the market ability is nice but i feel like if you're playing properly and this may be better for newer players because you can maybe you're not optimizing your warehouse positioning quite as well as you could be the market provides you something that you can do just fine with harpies with um with proper warehouse placement Moving on to the monastery, this is another service building. This one is better than the market. 
This one does religion and leisure. So if you have humans, beavers, lizards, which is the classic setup, setup number one that I call it, this is going to get you the most value. The monastery provides a very unique effect, which is minus 100 hostility, the green brew. If you have three workers in here, you get minus 100 hostility. This is a, a defensive building. There are a couple forest mysteries, you know, the random bad effects you get when uh, on each on each match that are really, really strong. For instance, or devastating, I guess I should say. For instance, you have the one that gives you minus two to global resolve for every dangerous and forbidden glade you've discovered. And that one's active at hostility four. That one can be a game ender. That one has ended a couple of my games because you reach hostility four and like you, your reputation, your resolve goes way down and there's nothing you can do about it. And, it, and it's just going to crush your game. Monastery, this is a safety net. This is a shield. This prevents you from, in, in a pinch, if you were about to lose the game to increased threat, that one particular forest mystery, or greater threat, whatever it's called, now you're not. Now you're going to put three workers in here, and you're going to be at minus 100 hostility. This is a very strong building. Whenever I see cornerstones that give minus hostility, such as burnt to a crisp, um, or the one that gives you hostility reduction for opening caches or the Queen's Patrol one, I always give them a strong consideration. Hostility reduction, especially at higher difficulties, is a crucial stat. So with all that in mind, let's let's rate the Monastery. The Monastery is an S-tier building. Not only can you use this defensively, but you can use it to get a plus two global resolve. Think of the Tavern gives you a plus three global resolve. The Monastery, if you use this during the Drizzle cycle or the Clearance cycle, that's basically equivalent to a plus two resolve to your species. I guess Fox is excluded, but that's fine. Uh, the Monastery, because it can save otherwise lost games during the storm and it provides you extra time in order to execute a win, the Monastery is truly unique and I do believe it belongs in the S tier. If you're a newer player, the Monastery may not be quite as good. I may suggest you the Forum instead because if you're playing on lower difficulties, hostility is less of a problem. The Forum, you probably want some more aggressive building that's going to get a win rather than the Monastery, which is a bit more defensive. If you're playing at higher difficulties though, Monastery, really, really solid building. Now we have a few filler buildings and the Plantation. The Plantation, this is our second farming building. The first one we discussed was the Herb Garden. This does two star berries, two star plant fiber. The Plantation, it did get a little bit worse because of the Fox's update, and here's why. This, the main selling point of the Plantation is that it boasts the most raw food production compared to the small farm and the Herb Garden. Herbs and grain cannot be eaten. If you want to make food at the small farm or the herb garden, you're going to make vegetables or roots, which you're only going to get three of. The plantation does berries, which you get six. If you want raw food, plantation is going to give you the most raw food. And that is a nice thing about the plantation. And I used to rate this very close to the small farm because it, it was a very, very competitive alternative for that reason. Now that the porridge recipe exists and you can turn grain and herbs into porridge at the field kitchen, I don't really value this so much. I think this selling point is significantly less good because I'm taking my grain, I'm taking my herbs, and I'm making raw or I'm making cooked food with them in the form of porridge. Anyways, I don't really care for the plantation. I, I think it's okay. If you're a new player, if you do not have the field kitchen, this building is quite a bit more valuable. If you're lacking the field kitchen and you have access to the plantation, you can draft the plantation and it's going to do some good things for you. The one good thing I can say about the plantation is that it synergizes very well with the ranch, which we'll see when we get to the ranch. So the plantation, this is going in the B tier, kind of lower in the B tier. I do think that it's still a good building and it will still provide you quite a bit of value. Berries can be used in wine, which is kind of a, a thing. The greenhouse does mushrooms, which, which can be used in wine. Berries and herbs are actually kind of similar. So I do consider the herb garden better than the plantation. The herb garden, uh, the herbs versus the, the berries, the herbs provide a little bit more that you can do with them, chiefly incense and crystal dew, which I do like a bit better than the wine that the berries unlock for you. But the fact that herbs turn into porridge is really the deciding factor here. Berries do not turn into porridge. And as I said, if you're missing the field kitchen, you can take the plantation. It is viable. It is viable. I would prefer to take the herb garden though. And if you really want to prepare for the late game, if you want to challenge yourself and 
prepare for the fact that the herb garden is better than the plantation and also the small farm is better than the plantation i would i would not take the plantation i would probably prepare myself by taking the herb garden and the small farm more than the plantation moving down to the press this is a building i moved up in the tier list recently i, I didn't used to like this building but on reflection i think it is actually okay this provides three-star oil. We already talked about the Druid's Hut, which I don't really care for, and the Butcher, which is good. This is a three-star oil, one-star flower, and one-star pack of luxury goods. The pack of luxury goods, this obviously competes with the Leather Worker and the Carpenter, which is part of why I didn't like this building so much, because if I want luxury goods, I want the Leather Worker or the Carpenter. This does one-star flower. There's a lot of, there's a, quite a few flower producing buildings. This is the only one star. This is very similar to the two star flower recipe though. The two star flower takes seven of each input. This takes eight. So this is less efficient than the two star, but not by a whole lot. It is viable. And usually this is enough flour to, to satisfy your needs. The three star oil, this is useful because if you are starting out the game, oil may take, may show up in glade events. If you have a stash of oil around, you can use it. You can open glades with a little bit more security, knowing that you have a solution for certain glade events on, ha on hand. Because it offers oil and flour, I do kind of like this combination. And this really does synergize with the small farm. If you look at this, small farm does grain, that turns into oil. The small farm does grain, that turns into flour. So if you're, if you're embarking with the small farm, you will get quite a bit of value from the press. Pack of luxury goods is... Nice, but it does compete with the carpenter and the leather worker. The press. This is a B tier building. I used to have it in the C tier. There are better ways to produce flour, and we haven't talked about the rain mill yet. The press is a very nice building, though, because it offers the oil, because it offers the flour. You can draft this one early and kind of rest assured that it does provide some amount of value for you. The provisioner. The Provisioner, this is our next flower producing building. All the flower producing buildings are right next to each other alphabetically for some reason. And as you can see, this is a seven, seven grain, seven mushroom, seven roots to make the 10 flower as opposed to eight. So this is marginally better than the press. This also has two star barrels, which I don't care for so much, and two star provisions, which as we talked about with the manufactory, I really don't care for this either. And there is no specialization bonus on the Provisioner, it's just missing. And this only seats two workers. This is a fairly lackluster building because it provides flour and flour is used for biscuits and pie and three species like biscuits and three species like pie. Flour is a very important resource and I do rate it for that reason. There are some situations where this will fill a niche very nicely, but it is a little bit lackluster with the two star barrels and the two star provision recipe. So the provisioner, make a guess on this one. This is going into the C plus tier. I rate it higher in the C tier than other things because it produces the flour, and I do really, really value the flour recipe. It can kind of can turn your game around once you have the ability to produce pie and biscuits. The provisioner will get you there. It's not my go-to pick for flour. In fact, like I would pick the press over the over the provisioner. Provisioner is okay though. Just be careful. Just be careful because it's not really a high value building. It's not something you want to be drafting. It's kind of like a you have to draft it situation. Rain collector, we, we don't need to talk about that. We do need to talk about the rain mill. And this is the flower producing building. This has three star flower and humans get a production bonus here. Beavers get a resolve bonus here. This is this is very good. Like this is the flower producing machine. A five to 10 ratio on flower. So, you know, the two star recipe takes seven. This only takes five. This is significantly better than the two star recipe. This, this thing produces a, a, a mountain of flour, which is great. I mean, you want flour, flour is a good resource. And if you have extra extra flour, you can put it into pack of trade goods. Having flour, extra flour it is totally fine. This also does one star scrolls, which is useful in a pinch for beavers and harpies and one star pack of building materials. And I do need to talk about pack of building materials quickly. Imagine a situation where you have the crude workstation and the makeshift host, and you want to make pack of building materials for a queen's order. So first you make fabric at the crude workstation or let's say planks. You make planks at the crude, crude workstation, and then you turn those planks into pack of building materials at the makeshift post. Well, that's rather inefficient, right? You're going to spend quite a bit of wood turning those into planks, and then quite a bit of planks turning those into pack of building materials. So would you rather, if you have a choice, would you rather take something like the rain mill to replace the makeshift post, or something like the carpenter to replace the 
crude workstation? And the answer, well, it may be obvious. I would certainly take the carpenter because that's a, an upstream resource. When you are very efficient at producing planks, it's kind of okay if you're not so efficient at turning those planks into pack of building materials because you're gaining all that efficiency by having a huge plank supply in the first place. And if you have the lumber mill, for instance, like then it's okay, like take those planks and put them into the makeshift post. You're going to have plenty of planks anyways. I would rather have the plank producing recipes than the building material recipes. And that's our pack of building material to be more specific. I, I do think this recipe is okay, the queen will sometimes ask you for building materials. Building materials do show up in a couple glade events now as an alternative to tools. Very rarely, but it does happen. Pack of building material production. This is nice to have, but it's strictly worse than having building materials themselves on tap. And this isn't that much better than the makeshift post. I think the makeshift post to take six fabric, six brick, maybe 10 planks. This is better than the makeshift post, but not by a lot. You do get a production bonus here for humans. That is a nice thing I can say about this. Overall, the rain mill. This is going into the A tier. I consider this to be a very good building, primarily because it just produces a mountain of flour, and flour is a great resource. But the other two recipes it offers are pretty good, and with two specialization bonuses, the rain mill does shine. It stands out as a fairly strong building. And if I'm looking to produce flour, I want the rain mill compared to any other building. This is this is really the building you want for flour. The ranch. All right, this is a favorite I see of some people. Like a lot of people I watch really value the ranch. And I think with good reason. The ranch provides kind of a niche that is not really fillable by any other, any other building. Because what this does is it generates meat, leather, and eggs. So this will enable things like water skin recipes. This will help you, if you don't have a meat supply, make jerky make skewers eggs can be used for like pickled goods this is this is very nice one point of note is you can use grain for any of these if you have the small farm the small farm will synergize with the ranch perfectly this is great the herb garden by contrast does not do anything with the ranch if you have the herb garden it's not going to provide any value at all if you see the ranch the plantation is actually the best the plantation offers plant fiber and berries so you, you have this two to five berries into eggs if you have the plantation the ranch does synergize with it extremely well but the small farm does just fine if you have the small farm and the ranch you're going to be a very happy camper i do like this building lizards get a production bonus here i frequently equip pipes to it and try to double my food supply when you go up on prestige difficulty you'll reach a level where food becomes a huge crucial thing if you're playing on lower difficulty levels you don't usually starve it can happen but it it's very slow on higher prestige difficulties, you will run out of food. And having this thing which creates more food, and even from non-food items, very unique, very, very nice. So the ranch, and this may surprise a couple of people, maybe this is a controversial opinion. <laughs> the ranch is going in the B plus tier, or kind of high up in the B tier. I like this building. It's not providing any complex food though. It's not gonna make your people happy. It only seats two workers, and it is not so good on certain biomes. If you're playing on the marsh or you're playing on the coral forest, you may not need the ranch because you're already going to have a supply of meat, eggs, and leather. I guess on the coral forest, there are no eggs. Eggs aren't particularly great though. If you're playing on the marsh or the coral forest, maybe don't get the ranch. If you're playing on one of the other three biomes, then yes, this can be a very strong building. It's very potent. It kind of fills a unique niche that is not fillable by any other building. So in that sense, it's kind of a safe pick. And keep in mind, if you have the herb garden, the ranch is not actually going to help you very much compared to the small farm and the plantation. Moving on to the scribe. I used to rate the scribe rather highly. The scribe fell a little bit, partly because of the foxes update. And luxury goods just got nerfed a little bit with the foxes update, right? Because scrolls used to be used by two out of four species, same with ale. Now it's two out of five. So these are diluted a little bit. They're not quite as useful. This one star tool recipe, this is fairly inefficient. This requires four copper bar or crystal dew compared to the three for the two star recipe and compared to two for the three star recipe. I don't find myself making tools at the scribe very often. It does come up occasionally. This is decent if you really need to make tools this this does enable you but there are much better ways to make tools at much better buildings the two star ale recipe is all right again this takes a one less barrel than it does pottery and water skins so if you have excess ale production or excess barrel production you can use that here 
And this takes five instead of four, like for instance at the brewery, which isn't much worse. It's a little bit, little bit worse, but not terrible. Scrolls. So the main thing about the scribe is three star scrolls. This is the only place to make three star scrolls unless you happen to find a haunted rain mill in a glade. And the scroll recipe typically takes three pigment and three wine if you're using the one star recipe. This is significantly better. It means you need a lot less pigment and a lot less wine. You may not even need to produce pigment or wine if you have this. You can just buy it from vendors or, ha or whatever you have spare. And this does want leather, plant fiber, wood. You'll almost always have wood. The scribe is okay because it provides this three star scroll recipe, which is rather unique. Like there's no other way to get this. This is by far the best scroll recipe. And it, if you use it for ale, that's okay too. And it seats three people. The resolve bonus for humans, again, not particularly important. These recipes are okay. They're not what you're looking to draft usually because there's no food and there's no building materials here, but these are okay. And it is the best scroll recipe in the game. The scribe. Scribe is going in the B tier, at the very, very bottom of the B tier. I considered demoting this to a C, but I think because it is the best scroll producing building in the game, and if I want to produce scrolls and ale, this is probably my go-to building for both of those things, and it does provide tools if, for some reason, you don't have any other tool producing building, the scribe will get you there. I do think it's okay. I do think it's an alright building. I wouldn't draft the scribe early on. But if you do find yourself with a choice of the scribe and something in the C tier, the scribe is likely going to be the more valuable building for you. And for the scribe, it's kind of a beaver building as well. The scribe does scrolls and ale, which are both beaver things. If you have beavers and humans and harpies, that's probably the best setup for the scribe. And it's worth noting that the scribe does feed into the forum very well. The forum consumes scrolls and ale. The scribe makes both of those things. And the forum is a very strong building. If you have the scribe, it means you'll be able to get even more value out of the forum. For that reason, I, I do think the scribe it belongs in the B tier, although a little bit of caution is needed when drafting this. All right, moving on to the small farm. This completes our trio of farming buildings, starting with the herb garden, then the plantation, then the small farm, just alphabetically. This does two star grain, one star vegetables, and you can embark with this thing, which I recommend that you do. The small farm is a very good building. I embark with this thing frequently. Grain is a very versatile resource. Grain can be turned into porridge, of course. Grain can also be used in pack of crops. Grain can be used in flour. Grain becomes ale. Grain can be used at every single recipe at the ranch. And grain can be used in oil. For those reasons, I very much value grain. You want a steady supply of it. Not every map is going to have it. The marsh does have grain on it. I believe the Scarlet Orchard and the Cursed Woodlands have grain on them as well. Even still, I find myself picking the small farm when I embark all the time, even if it is to one of those biomes. Now that grain can be turned into porridge, there used to be one crippling weakness with the small farm, which is grain is not edible. Now that you turn it into porridge at the field kitchen or the beanery, the small farm really has all of its gaps closed. This is an extremely good building. If you don't have the field kitchen unlocked because you're climbing the citadel, you're still unlocking your citadel, you may consider the plantation because it provides the most raw food. However, I would potentially advise taking the small farm anyways. I believe this building provides so much value, you kind of want to get used to it. I think this is a meta-defining building in many ways. And for those reasons, you're going to rate the small farm into the S tier, all the way at the top of the S tier. This could be a controversial opinion. I think the small farm is the best farming building in the game. Now that it was the best farming building before foxes came out, and now that it turns into porridge, it just it's just even better. I used to have it around here in the A tier, right next to the plantation. I just don't see that anymore. I think with porridge we and the field kitchen, we have a very clear divide where the small farm is a, a very, very good building. You pretty much always want to take this. If I'm embarking and the small farm costs five embarkation points instead of four, I may consider taking the herb garden if the herb garden is only four embarkation points. But if I'm looking at these both cost five embarkation points and I'm looking at the plantation at four, there's a strong chance I'm just going to take the small farm anyways because... I do think it is significantly more valuable than the plantation. 
that's your small farm. People do ask me which of these three buildings you should embark with, and there you have it. I think they are all viable. As I said, the plantation is in the B tier. In the plantation, there's nothing wrong with it exactly, other than it's not the herb garden and it's not the small farm. And if you don't have the field kitchen unlocked, the plantation is a consideration. So if you're still progressing in the game, do give the plantation a consideration. But if you have the field kitchen, I would say small farm or herb garden are easily the best choices, and almost certainly small farm is what you want. All right, now we have the smelter. The smelter does one star biscuits, two star pipes, and three star copper bar. Lizards like to work here. It seats three workers. On the scarlet orchard, the smelter is okay because you will find copper ore on the ground and you will get it from trees. So you're going to have a lot of copper ore on the scarlet orchard. This may be better. Pipes, this kind of synergizes because you're turning your copper ore into copper bars and then you can use copper bars to make pipes. I don't really care for the pipe recipe too much because you can do this at the crude workstation. And yes, it is significantly less efficient at the crude workstation, but I don't think pipes are a very crucial resource. They're used for the rain punk, putting pipes into buildings. That part is nice. I do like to do that. But as I hinted at before, what I tend to do is find a geyser, put a geyser down on that, uh, a geyser cap down on it. And then that costs six pipes you have eight pipes left over, which is enough for two buildings. And if you have one geyser and two buildings of the corresponding color, that's generally fine. You'll get a pretty good usage out of your rain engines that way. And that's, you don't need to make a single pipe in order to do that at the end game. So I, I very much don't value the ability to produce two star pipes. It is okay. It's not something I'm trying to draft for though. It, it's just kind of a nice side effect. And this three star copper bar recipe, it's not particularly great. The five copper ore to two copper bar ratio that the furnace gives you is just fine. And the furnace is one of the best buildings in the game. This competes really heavily with the furnace. We haven't looked at the stamping mill yet, but I also do value the stamping mill reasonably well. And the one star recipe on the stamping mill, while it is less efficient than this one, usually it's good enough. This one star biscuit recipe is not much better than the field kitchen. If you have the field kitchen, this thing is, is going to not provide you really any any additional value. The fact that lizards like to work here is okay, but lizards don't even care for biscuits. Overall, the smelter, it leaves something to be desired. So you may have a strong idea where this one is going. It's going on the C tier, kind of low, below the bathhouse. I think it is a little better than the brewery. Sometimes you need to make copper bars. That is a concern. If you have copper ore and you need to turn them into copper bars, the smelter will help you. In that case, it's kind of all, all right. And on the Scarlet Orchard, as I said, this is a very pickable building. If you're not on the Scarlet Orchard, I would think very carefully before drafting the smelter. The pipe recipe, it just doesn't do it for me. The one star biscuit recipe either, I think. And it, there are alternative alternatives to making copper bar from copper ore. For those reasons, I don't really value the smelter. It is draftable. It's in the C tier, kind of in the middle of the C tier but you're going to find better choices out there. The Smithy, okay. The Smithy has a resolve bonus for beavers and a resolve bonus for lizards. We have two star tools, two star coats, and two star pack of trade goods. I already showed on the spreadsheet why two star pack of trade goods is really strong. This is one of the best value producing recipes in the game. You can sell these on trade routes. They actually show up quite a bit. You can pawn them on vendors. You can use them for quests. Pack of Trade Goods is a really nice recipe to have, and not one you have by default. There's only three buildings in the game that get you this, and this is the best one. You can use any of these inputs. This is all rather efficient. It doesn't matter which of these resources you're using for the most part. I think oil is the least efficient, but everything else is pretty good. If you're going to produce coats, I think this building or the clothier are the way to do it. Beavers like coats, and beavers get the synergy to work here. This building, what I like about this building is it provides a very nice ensemble of recipes. Like these are all kind of different from each other. This requires copper bar crystal dew, this requires fabric, this requires like a bunch of other things. Frequently at the Smithy, you will have one of these recipes available to work on. And with pack of trade goods being so good and simple tools being a very crucial recipe, pardon me, tools being a super crucial recipe, I do like this. And with two specialization bonuses, that's kind of the icing on the cake, the Smithy, and think, think about where this one deserves to go. I'm putting it in the A tier, kind of in the bottom of the A tier. I, I did have this one higher before. I think because the Clothier is now a viable building, since Harpies get the Resolve bonus here and Harpies like coats, I, 
I value the Smithy a little bit less because of this alternative for coats. And of course, it's competing with the Carpenter for, for tools and other buildings as well, which we will discuss. The Smithy is all right. I think it's hard to go wrong by drafting this because of the pack of trade goods recipe. Even though some of its offerings are competing with similar buildings, the Smithy will provide you a lot of value. I do like the Smithy. The Smokehouse. The Smokehouse used to be a rather good building and it fell down a tier list ever since the Fox's update. Here's why. Firstly, Lizards get a double bonus to work here, which is really solid. Lizards like jerky, and this is a three-star jerky recipe, so this is by far the best jerky recipe in the game, the best place to produce jerky. Lizards get a chance to double it. Lizards like to work here. Lizards get the three-star jerky recipe. And lizards also like incense. This is kind of a lizard building overall. As you can see, if you're missing lizards, the smokehouse is very lackluster. The only other species in the game that likes jerky is harpies. This used to be humans as well. This used to be three out of four species like jerky. Now it's only two out of five, which is kind of weak. If you want to produce jerky, I would still suggest doing it at the butcher. There's also a couple other good options, like the kiln is a good building. This one, while this is a nice jerky recipe, because jerky is only used by two species, and because you can do this at the field kitchen, it's it's a little bit weak. And this 4 to 10 ratio is significantly better than the field kitchen's 8 to 10. This incense recipe is not as good as the apothecary's incense recipe. The one star pottery recipe is fairly weak. I don't, I don't need to show the spreadsheet for this one, but a four to five ratio on pottery, if, when you look at the stamping mill, it's actually twice as good. It's got two to five on pottery, which is very nice. Pottery is good, but there are other pottery recipes out there in the bakery and the brickyard. This recipe, it's not quite so good. I usually disable it. In general, if you have lizards, the smokehouse is a pretty solid pick. If you're missing lizards, this is probably something you want to avoid. And it does seat three workers. So the smokehouse. This is going in the B tier. Because it's so dependent on having lizards, I do like this building. The jerky recipe is actually quite strong. If we look at the jerky recipe, three star jerky, I have it highlighted here. It is, it is only a 350 SPA, but if you compare it to the two-star jerky and the one-star jerky, this is generating value quite a bit more efficiently compared to those other two recipes. And with the chance to double for lizards, if you have lizards and harpies, the smokehouse will do quite a bit for you. And I think lizards, humans, harpies is going to be the best setup for the smokehouse because humans and lizards both share the incense need. That's your, smoke, that's your smokehouse. We are moving on to the stamping mill which I was just talking about. This has the signature three-star pottery recipe, which is a two to five on clay to pottery. It also does two-star flour and one-star copper bar. What I like about the stamping mill is, like firstly, these are fairly input diverse. This requires clay, this requires copper ore, but this also, this requires something totally different. So this is very input diverse. You're likely to have something you can work on at the stamping mill. It has an engineering bonus for beavers. They like to work here and it seats two workers, which is a little bit weak, but these recipes, are a very nice package. I like the containers, I like the flour. This is going to enable a lot of your food recipes. This will enable pickled goods, this will enable pie and biscuits and the copper bars. I think this is one of the better because I, I don't really care for the smelter too much and the grill neither. The furnace and the stamping mill are really the probably the best copper bar producing buildings even though this is only a one star recipe. I do think it's all right because you want the flour and the pottery is a very nice side effect as well. So the stamping mill, Give this one a good think. And this may surprise you. <laughs> it's going in the B tier, right below the smokehouse. The thing with the stamping mill is it's not providing a whole lot of value. The flour recipe is not as good as the rain mill. The copper bar recipe is doable at other places. That is actually the weakest of the four copper bar recipes. We'll see when we get to the grill. And the pottery recipe has alternatives. It has alternatives in the form of barrels and water skins. And pottery doesn't get any benefits like barrels and water skins do for specific recipes. So pottery, yeah, uh, while I do like pottery, and there are other ways to produce pottery at the brickyard, which is a very strong building, and at the bakery, which is also quite nice. The stamping mill is a strong building, but I, I think it's a fairly run-of-the-mill building, <laughs> joke intended. It's going to be rather average for you. Next we have the supplier. 
This is another flower producing building, two star flower, two star planks, and two star water skins. You may have a solid idea what I think about this already because it has planks, which I consider to be very good, and flower, which I consider to be very good, and water skins. We took a look at the two star water skin recipe before. This isn't as good as the leather workers three star water skin recipe, but this is still very solid. Harpies get a resolve bonus to work here, and this is one of the better harpy resolve buildings compared to things like the artisan and the manufactory, which are pretty weak. The fact that harpies like to work here is, is solid. I, I like this very much. Planks and flower. If I saw this as my first draft of the game, there's a very strong chance I would take it. This is going to be stronger on the marsh and stronger on the coral forest because of the water skins recipe and you're likely to find meat nodes on those biomes. Overall, I, I really have nothing but good things to say about the supplier. I think you should take this often. The supplier is going near the top of the A tier. This is kind of a borderline S tier building actually. I think the main thing holding it back is that it's not the best at doing anything. The leather worker is better at producing uh, water skins. The carpenter and the lumber mill are better at producing planks. And flour is best on the rain mill. Despite that, this building offers three very solid recipes and it, it should not be underestimated. Next up, we have the tavern. This is a fairly average building, right? This is fairly, fairly bread and butter building. Beavers like this because beavers do leisure and luxury. If you have humans, beavers, foxes, you'll get the most value out of the tavern. The unique effect here is really straightforward. Not much to say about this. This is just plus three resolve for everyone if you have three people in the tavern. Compare this to something like the Explorer's Lodge, which gets stacks for every building you find, or something like the Tea Doctor, which gets stacks for food, consumption, or something like the Guild House, which gets stacks for trade routes. This is just a static three, which is pretty nice. You can put this down at almost any point of the game and get your plus three stacks from it. It's, it's very sturdy. It's hard to go wrong with the tavern. Regardless of your setup, you will find some value in this building. So the tavern, this is going in the B tier, right above the smokehouse and below the bakery. I think this is a fairly average building. There's some things which pack a bit more punch to them. The tavern is a safe bet at just about any stage of the game. You want your plus three global resolve, that's great. In the end game, you're trying to crank out your reputation through resolve, You'll the tavern will help you get there. This can help you survive the storm sometimes. It's just a very average building. It's hard to go wrong. Next up, we have the Tea Doctor, which I just talked about. This is a fox building. Foxes like both treatment and brawling. If you have foxes, lizards, harpies, the setup number 10, this will be your strongest value you can get from the Tea Doctor. The special effect on the Tea Doctor, and this was nerfed very recently, every time you consume a complex food, it gets a stack. Every 200 stacks, you get plus one global resolve on here. So if you're producing complex food, this will result in lots of global resolve stacks, which is very nice. Stacking global resolve is something you want. Your options here are kind of the guild house, uh, the tavern, the explorer's lodge. This is a very secure way to do it because you want to be generating complex food and not to mention the field kitchen every single time, but if you have the field kitchen, you will, you will be making complex food a lot. I rate the tea doctor rather highly. This was nerfed. It used to be 150 units per stack. Now it's 200 units per stack. So it does stack a bit slower. And this is a late game building. You may not get value out of this until like year seven or eight, maybe year six. Before that, it's going to be a, a bit missing in stacks. But in the late game, you are going to get quite a bit of value from it. And what I like about this is it rewards you for doing something which you want to do anyways. You want to be making and eating complex food. The tea doctor, you don't need to go out of your way to make this a good effect. It's just going to happen. The tea doctor. This is an A tier building. I rate it right below the forum. The reason for that is the forum is a very aggressive building and you can put the forum down on year three and start getting value from the forum by doubling your goods. And you know, if you're, if you're doubling complex food, like that helps the tea doctor. With the tea doctor, like imagine having the beanery tea doctor combo, like this is extremely strong. You wanna be drafting complex food producing buildings. You wanna be eating complex food. Tea Doctor is very strong. I think even after the nerf, it deserves to be in the A tier. We'll see. I'll play a few more games and see if it actually falls a few spots because of this. A lot of people seem to think the Tea Doctor is their favorite building, and I, I perfectly understand why. If the Tea Doctor is your favorite building, there's a good reason for that. Although after the nerf, maybe people won't think that quite as much. Next up, we have the Tea House. 
This is a Harpy production building and a Fox Resolve building. It's got three star tea, two star porridge, one star water skins. I don't care for the one star water skin recipe. This is fairly inefficient. Two star porridge is nice. We talked about this with the distillery. It's better than the field kitchen by quite a, quite a margin. I think it's about 60% better. So you can turn five grain into 10 porridge instead of eight grain into 10 porridge at the field kitchen. And tea requires crystal dew, it requires water, and it requires a variety of these inputs. This is the best place in the game to produce tea. This is a three star recipe and it takes only one copper bar or crystal dew as opposed to two, which the other recipes for tea require. Because of that, and because harpies get a production bonus here, this is actually a very good place to produce tea. If you have harpies and foxes, this building will do quite a bit for you. If you have harpies, foxes, humans, this is probably the best setup because humans and foxes like porridge, harpies and foxes like the tea. This building is all right. It's kind of setup dependent. If you're missing harpies and foxes or you're missing, especially if you're missing foxes, it's not going to do quite as much for you. Tea house. This is going in the B tier, below the clothier, a little bit on the lower side of the, the lower half of the B tier. It's okay because it has the two star porridge recipe. And if you don't have the field kitchen, give this one a, a, a bigger consideration because you want to you want to be able to make the porridge. The tea house is all right because it's the best tea producing building in the game, even better than the alchemist hut. I think it is worthy of putting up there, but it is a little bit lackluster if you don't have the right setup. You really want to have foxes and ideally harpies to make the tea house yield its best value for you. We're getting kind of close to the end, aren't we? So stick with us. If you're still watching, thank you very much. Friendly reminder, if you disagree with some of these placements, which hopefully you do, leave me a comment, find me on Twitch, and let's let's have a discussion about this. I, I think it's important as a community to continue this conversation and really develop the game a bit ourselves by having these difficult discussions about value and the state of the game. The temple. Up next, this is the temple. We've got religion and education, which means that humans and lizards and beavers and harpies like this. The temple does nothing for foxes. This effect, it is. Good sacrificed in the ancient hearth last 25% longer. Sacrament of the flame. This effect, well, I'll tell you what. The temple is going into the D tier. I don't have too much else to say about this. Good sacrificing longer in the hearth is such a poor effect. When you're playing at higher difficulties, when you're, when you're, and more specifically, when you're playing at a higher skill level, you don't need to sacrifice things in the hearth very often. Like, yes, you will. Sometimes you need to sack a little bit of sea marrow. Sometimes you need to get your hostility down for a brief moment. But usually when I do that, it's because I'm sacrificing for just a split second to get my hostility down for one particular thing. I'm not keeping wood sacrifice active for very long. The fact that Temple lets you sacrifice goods for a bit more value is really pathetic. You want something like the Monastery, which is just giving you that hostility reduction without having to sacrifice for it. The Temple, I, I, I really can't justify drafting this building. It does provide services, and I actually did draft it in one of my recent games, but I never built it. it it's simply not providing anything of value. You'd rather take just about any other service building in the game, including the market, past the temple. Just don't, just don't, just don't take it. Moving on to a better building, we have the Tinctury. The Tinctury is human resolve, harpy production bonus. The Tinctury seats two workers. It does two star ale, two star wine, and two star pigment. This building is I mean, think about it. I mean, what do you think I think about this building? Not very good, right? It's not very good because it takes containers for two of its recipes. We've already mentioned why the brewery is not so good and why the cellar is not so good because it's so dependent on containers. This is suffering from the same problem. It's got two recipes which require containers. And even worse, this pigment recipe, it kind of collides with wine, right? Pigment and wine are both used to make scrolls. That's one of the uses of pigment. So maybe there's no reason to have both of these recipes on here. I think this building is somewhat okay because harpies get a production bonus here and because you can make ale and wine here. This is one of the better buildings for producing ale and wine, coincidentally. I guess the alchemist hut is the best for producing wine, but if you don't have the alchemist hut, maybe the tinctury is, is fine. 
ale if you don't have the brewery and i don't really like the brewery your other options are the tinctury and the scribe and this does have better ale production than the scribe because harpies have a chance to double it the tinctury is overall a weak building it does fill in some niches if you have some gaps in your production this will help you in some cases however don't take this building early draft it only in the mid to late game when you know you really want ale or you really want wine otherwise it's going to disappoint you tinctury it's going in the c tier right above the brewery right below the smelter typically avoid this the best setup you're going to get for the tinctury is humans beavers harpies because harpies have a production chance doubling chance at the tinctury humans and beavers like the ale beavers like the wine I guess you could, I guess uh, beavers, foxes, harpies is also fine. Lizards don't really get anything out of the tinctury, but you're going to want harpies if you pick the tinctury to get that production bonus. The Tinkerer. This is another one of our tool producing buildings. We've already talked about the smithy and the carpenter, which do two star tools. This is the other two star tool producing building. It also does two star pack of building materials and two star training gear. Beavers get a resolve bonus to work here and it seats three workers, which is nice. These recipes are okay. My main gripe with this is tools can be done at the carpenter and the smithy, which I consider to be better buildings than the tinkerer. This is my preferred place to make training gear, even though the, even though there's no production bonus on this, like there is at the cooperage. This is very nice. This this recipe will get you your training gear if you need it. And pack of building materials two star. This is actually quite a bit better than the rain mill, which does uh, five and five fabric and bricks. This is a lot, quite a bit more efficient when you make the jump from five to four. So this is okay. I, I already mentioned why pack of building materials is not something you should be drafting for in principle. You want to be drafting for building materials more than pack of building materials. However, this building does provide the best building material recipe. It is, it is quite nice to have. Building materials do show up in Glade events occasionally. They show up um, in Queen's Orders. You can put them on trade routes. If you have solid fabric, brick, or plank production, you may get some good mileage out of this. I think this building it is selling me on something, but let's put it into its tier list first. Tinkerer is a B plus building. I value it reasonably well. Its main issue is that it competes with the Smithy and the Carpenter, as I mentioned. The best setup you might have for this is going to be beavers, foxes and lizards because then you'll get the resolve bonus for beavers and the lizards foxes like the training gear the tinkerer is selling me on glade event resolutions or yeah pretty much glade event resolutions you can use tools to solve glade events and open caches you can use building materials occasionally to solve glade events and you can use the swords to open caches it is nice when you're opening glades the tinkerer provides you quite a few tools to um, to resolve some of the events that you may find inside of glades the Tinkerer is all right for that reason. It would be better if the Smithy and the Carpenter didn't exist, of course. The Tool Shop. This is our fabled three-star tool recipe. And as you can see, it takes only two Copper Bar Crystal Dew as opposed to three, which makes this pretty nice. This is a very solid recipe. Two workers sit here, beavers get a resolve bonus. What I want you to do is put your hand up over your screen and I want you to cover everything below this three-star tool recipe. Okay, now that's exactly what you get out of the tool shop. You get this three-star tool recipe. These other recipes, they don't matter. The two-star pipes, re pipes recipe, you can do without this. You can make these at the crude workstation or you can purchase them from vendors. You should not need a whole mess of pipes. Pipes are not that valuable. Like yes, you put them in buildings for rain engines, but there's really no other application for pipes. You don't need this recipe. And one-star barrels is a pretty pathetic recipe. What's even worse about this building is all of these require copper bar crystal dew. If you're missing copper bar crystal dew, there's nothing you can do with the tool shop. This building is a little bit unfortunate for that reason. The tool shop, and give this one a good think. This is a B tier building, a little bit lower on the B tier for sure. The fact that it has three star tool recipe, it really is worth that much to me. 50% more tools. Tools provide you a way to win the game by opening caches, by solving glade events. The fact that this does very efficient tools makes it valuable. I would still rather have the Tinkerer and the Carpenter and the Smithy overall, but three-star tools is draftable at 
many parts of the game. I think you should give this building a strong consideration. If you don't already have tool production, it will do quite a bit for you. And the pipes are kind of a nice side effect. It'll get you a little bit more pipes efficiently. So uh, I realized I've forgotten to reveal this building, so we're going to backtrack a little bit. I kind of skipped over it. We're going up to the grill, all the way back in the G section. The grill does three star skewers, one star copper bar, and one star ale. Lizards get a double bonus to work here. The skewers recipe for three star, this is fairly efficient, but if you're using jerky, the two star recipe is totally fine. You typically want to be using jerky, and that's why I like the butcher so much, because the butcher does jerky, the jerky can be used in skewers, which is even more efficient. While the grill is nice, and it does see three people, this building is fairly limited. I, I don't care for it so much. Lizards get the double bonus, and lizards like skewers. If you're missing ske if you're missing lizards, this building is not doing quite so much for you. The one star copper bar recipe is okay, but I prefer the stamping mill or the furnace. The one star ale recipe is pretty weak. I'm not so into this. I think the grill is a relatively weak building. It's really dependent on having lizards and also foxes. If you have lizards, like even then, only only your lizards will eat the skewers. You really need lizards and foxes to get the full benefit from the grill. For that reason, I, I don't quite see it. I think it, it. I think it is draftable in some cases, specifically when you have lizards and foxes. The grill's going into the C tier. I did forget to reveal this one before, so there it is. I don't think there's too much more to say about the grill. Probably don't draft it unless you're sure you're going to have quite a few lizards. With that, let's move down to back where we were. And we're going to the last two buildings in the game. Which means this is Final Jeopardy. Devil or nothing, all your points. You are keeping track of your points, right? The Weaver and the Workshop. These are our last two buildings. Let's discuss the Weaver first. The Weaver has a Resolve bonus for Harpies. This is the three-star fabric recipe, which does a two to two ratio on inputs into fabric as opposed to three to two. And it completes very quickly in 28 seconds. Training gear, this is a one-star training gear recipe, which is not terribly worse than the two-star. It takes three more stone and one more of these. So it is worse than the two-star recipe, but it is, it is also serviceable. And one-star pack of trade goods shared with the lumber mill and the smithy. I've talked quite a bit about, about why a pack of trade goods is a really nice recipe to have. It unlocks quests for you. You can put these on trade routes. This is a very high value recipe to work on. So that's the weaver. Now we're going to take a look at the workshop. As you know, I very heavily value these two star building material recipes. And here it is. The workshop has two star bricks, two star fabric, two star planks. What more could you want, right? And you can drop this down right at the beginning of the game. This costs six planks, six bricks, six fabric on Prestige 20 difficulty. You can put this down right away because you start with seven planks, seven bricks, seven fabric on P20 difficulty. The fact that you don't need to make a crude workstation at all and you can just plop this right down on year one, second one, really nice. This also has pipes, so this really is kind of an improved crude workstation. I really like the workshop. I think it is maybe not as good as I originally thought it was. But it is still an extremely strong building, and whenever I see this, I think to myself, thank gosh, I know I'm going to have a sturdy game. You know, this is not going to be a lack of building materials game, or at least it's less likely to be. So, let's flash back over here and give it some thought. Which one do you think is better, the Weaver or the Workshop? And I may have given that away partially with some verbiage I used. But we're going to reveal the workshop. Yep, the workshop is going to complete our A tier. It's kind of in the middle of the A tier, below the T-Doctor. The workshop is a very good building. The problem with the workshop is you typically want it early on. Once you have one other building which produces building materials, the workshop loses a lot of value. But it's still, still pretty good. When you look at things like the lumber mill and the furnace, <clears throat> The reason why I don't rate the workshop any higher is because you want the carpenter, you want the furnace, and you want something like the leather worker to make fabric or, you know, the weaver to make fabric. Ideally, you would have like the lumber mill, the weaver, and the furnace, and those are going to be the sources of your building materials. The weaver is going to round out our S tier, and this is it. This is the full 
tier list. Thank you again for watching my video. Find me on Twitch. Leave me a comment if you disagree with some of the rankings on this tier list. One final thought on the Weaver. I, I want to go back to the spreadsheet one more time, and we're going to go to the top. This three-star fabric recipe, this is why the Weaver is in the S tier. This fabric recipe generates value at a rate of 67 seconds per amber, which is so, so strong. You, you won't find anything like that on any building material. Like the only other things generating comparable value are the pack of trade goods, pack of luxury goods recipe, and maybe three-star tools. This is such a strong recipe, and you're frequently going to have inputs to make fabric. Combine that with the fact that the Weaver gets a resolve bonus for Harpies. It is a Harpy building, but even if you don't have Harpies, I think this is very good. Fabric can be used at Harpy houses, Lizard houses. It can be turned into coats. It can be turned into pack of building materials, which I frequently do with it. It's needed for warehouses. A lot of, a lot of buildings take fabric as well. Fabric is a very good resource and nothing compares to the Weaver at churning out fabric, not even the leather worker or the granary. For that reason, it belongs in the S tier. Let's do a quick recap. I, I thought about doing this at the beginning of the video, but I figured I might lose people. I wanted to get right into it. This is how I rate buildings under their tiers. I ask these questions. Bottom line, how strong is it? How valuable are its recipes? How flexible is it? How does it compare to similar buildings? S tier buildings are the best of the best. A tier are very strong. B tier are of average strength. C tier are of subpar strength. D tier are extremely weak. And when do you draft this? It's almost always draftable at any stage of the game for S tier. A tier, it is frequently draftable at any point of the game, but may be better at certain stages. B tier, it is often draftable, but somewhat influenced by the current biome species. C tier, it is draftable in the late game or in certain biome species setup. D tier, it is extremely dependent on the current setup. I do think the D tier buildings need a buff. I would like to see maybe something to improve these. I'm not sure what what I would do exactly. The seller could perhaps stand to gain a two-star jerky recipe instead of the one-star jerky recipe. The temple just needs a better effect. The clay pit needs to be less dependent on drizzle water. I'm not sure about the advanced rain collector. I think maybe reducing its building material cost is a good way to go for that one. That would be my suggestion. So again, thank you everybody. It's been a pleasure. I hope you've had as much fun watching this as I had presenting it. One final thing before I go. I've been brainstorming some ideas for another video I might make. Which of these ideas interests you more? A series on how to play on specific biomes, a series on the specific synergies between species, or a series about how to unlock, unlock benefits at the Citadel in the most efficient way possible. Let me know in a comment, find me on Twitch, let me know there, or on Discord. Until then, I'll see you.